Well, happy Friday, everyone. You know what that means, another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I am here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you've joined the channel or the live stream, first of all, welcome. Awesome to have you here. The way this works is super simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. If you're on YouTube client, it'll probably be on the right side of your screen. In there, you enter your question, comment, concern of the day, and I work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not, but either way, Either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. Guys, it's been a rainy past few days. You know, for a while here in Georgia, we've had nothing but dry weather and that's completely changed here in the last uh, week or so. The last two days, two and a half, almost three days, it's just been raining straight, which has been good. Welcome, uh, welcome change, right? All right, so let's see what we have in the live stream tonight. Mr. Putz is up first. He says, evening, Ron, huge question for you. Is winter over yet? No, it's not over yet. Sadly, no. Winter isn't even really here yet, much less being over. But uh, but I get it, man. It's I've been uh, I've been scratching my itch to get out in the lawn and mow anyway. And it's because the weather has gotten a little bit milder than it was oh a month or so ago. It's uh, the lawn's actually greening up again a little bit, believe it or not. So we'll uh, we'll see if it if it holds out. The the weather's supposed to be nice here for the next ten days. You know, in the fifties. So. You know, hope springs eternal. The Bermuda will get a little bit of green, a little bit of color back, and uh, we'll be able to enjoy it just a little bit, a little bit longer. All right, guys. So definitely get those questions queued up. Any questions you have in the live stream? Um, we've got forty something people in here so far. So if you guys want to hit the like button while you're getting all settled in with your beverage of choice for some good turf talk, I would really, really appreciate it. Also, guys, tonight as well. Remember, we're giving away uh, the hat tonight. Tonight is a giveaway night. So the way you enter to to have a chance of winning this is super simple. In last week's live stream, you find last week's live stream and just leave a comment about dominating your neighborhood, having the lawn it, that the rest of your neighbors are going to envy, something like that, something along those lines. Feel free to drop that in last week's live stream. You know what? Because I know you guys don't want to have to go look it up yourself. I, I, you know what? 
I know how you guys are. You're like, it's too much work. I don't have to go get it myself. Send me the link. Here is last week's uh, live stream to enter. And what, I'll, what I'm thinking is, depending on how many questions we have tonight, it might be a short night tonight, but depending on how many questions we have tonight, sometime after the eight o'clock hour, after we get an hour in, um, is when I will do the drawing. The way it's gonna work is it's uh, gonna be randomly drawn based on a comment that's in the uh, last week's live stream. And uh, yeah, entering multiple times does not, has not helped you because it deduplicates. So if you, if you put like your, you spam the comment section, you're not really doing yourself any favors, just enter one time and uh, that's all you need to have a chance at winning a one of one hat. It's a really nice hat. It's got a nice leather patch on it. This is uh, courtesy of Mr. Josh Abib. Never worn, it was a gift that he sent to me and um, I just can't bear to wear it because I know I'll get it dirty and it'll, it'll drive me crazy. So one of you guys will win it tonight. All right, so next up, Mr. Putz is, or uh, Ogsen is up next with, with the first question around herbicides. He says, hey, Ron, let me get you up here. He says, hey, Ron, can you give me a great herbicide for clover? Thanks. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple different options. It depends on what kind of grass you have. If you have warm season grass, you can always go with Celsius, which I don't have here. Yeah, I do. If you have warm season grass, you can go with something like Celsius. Awesome option. If you have cool season grass, you can go with Tenacity. Both of those will, both of these will take care of clover. So for warm season Celsius, cool season Tenacity. Um, and you know, if you want to try and take a more economical route, you can use like a three-way like Triad Select. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We can take our first trip of the evening over to the golf course lawn store. You go to shop and weed killer section. And uh, so for your warm season grass, this is your option. For cool season grass, this is an option. And then for warm and cool seasons, a three-way, this is not quite as potent or as effective as tenacity for cool season or Celsius for warm season. But if you just want something that's gonna be a little bit less expensive um, and works fairly well, if you wanna give this a shot, and you can think of Triad as almost like um, spectricide on steroids. If you take spectricide and took it up a few notches, that's in many ways uh, the kind of performance you can expect to get out of Triad Select. So it's really your call. Uh, I'm a fan of Celsius for warm season grass because the nice thing about this is as temps go up, you know, whenever, we have the problem right now, but next year, whenever we get back into the spring and summer months, Celsius will, you know, you, the, the range that you can use it without risking damaging your lawn is much higher than uh, than some of the some of the less expensive herbicides. And again, for, for tenacity, again, for cool season, that's your, your jam there. But again, if you just wanna save some money, you can go with Triad. So you got three options. You asked a question, I gave you three different options, one for cool season, one for warm season, and one kind of for both. So it just depends on which way you wanna go. And uh, they should do a pretty good job knocking out that uh, that clover. For try it, it may take more than one application to get it done. Celsius or Tenacity, as long as you use a surfactant with it, should be able to get it done in one go. So just, uh, just bear that in mind. Great question. Next up is Mr. Papa Moslow. He says, hey Ron and everyone, what's going on Papa Moslow? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Hopefully you're getting some of this rain that we're getting here in Georgia. I mean, it's you know it's, it's either feast or famine. We can't get like one day of rain per week and then six days of nice weather. You know, it's all gotta come over the course of like two or three days and then we'll probably get no rain for another two, three weeks afterwards, right? That's the way mother nature works. Next up is Mary J. She's in the house, she says, Hey, Brother Ron, I hit the thumbs up for green grass. I appreciate that, Mary. Thanks for all the love and support. And definitely, guys, if for you guys, as you're getting settled in, feel free to hit that like button. It's a free way to support the channel. Sends good vibes to the algorithm and gets folks coming this way, you know? All right, next up is Mr. Robert Majoros. He's up, he says, hopefully all is well and staying safe, whatever you're having. Thanks again, uh, Ron. Appreciate that, Robert. Yeah, tonight, tonight, believe it or not, it's just water. Just plain old H2O tonight. Try to drink more water. So uh, instead of drinking uh, lemonade like I normally do, or sometimes occasionally coffee, like last week I had coffee, so I'm just gonna drink just straight, just straight up uh, water. I've got some ice in here and that's that's about it. So it, I'm doing well, man. I can't complain to this. This was a bit of a hectic week, but I'm glad that it is over. I can relax a little bit and hang out with you guys for, for a while. Give a cool hat away, you know, just enjoy, uh, enjoy the Friday evening. And Wayne is weighing in on <clears throat> on Ogsen's question, he says you might want to try triclopyr. That's an option. So again, there's there's tons of different uh, herbicides for killing clover. Uh, um, Ogsen, there's, it's not particularly a difficult one to get rid of. But I gave you three options. Wayne is giving you another option there. Again, there's 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 plenty of options you can use for uh, for that. The big thing is 
Uh, make sure that whatever you, I believe you have warm season grass. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're a Bermuda guy, but whatever you go with whatever herbicide you choose, make sure that it is suitable for your grass type. You don't want to put tenacity on warm season grass or Celsius on cool season grass. I know this became like all the rage to do that here in the past few years, but really it's it's a bad idea. There's, no, there's really no reason to do it. Next up, we got Hickey Pop. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I hope everyone enjoys the weekend. Yeah, man, should be a good weekend. We got Formula One. I think it was the Brazilian Grand Prix, I think, this time. So they're racing down uh, in Brazil. And then football on Sunday, which is always nice. And Georgia. Georgia remains undefeated, right? That's pretty cool. So uh, they took down Tennessee last weekend. So that was, uh, you know, overall from, from a sports standpoint, well, no, the Falcons lost last night, but the Falcons always lose. So you can't, you can't really count that against Atlanta. I'm saying that, you know, in general, for the most part, you know, for college football and for other stuff, stuff that I care about anyway, we're doing, we're doing fairly well. Doing fairly well. You know, we had one question last week, guys, around the, um, the question of like the leopard spots that you get in the lawn. Uh, like what particularly causes them. And, you know, I looked around, I did I did quite a bit of research on this over the past week, and I haven't been able to find a straight answer. I mean, it, the, the long short of it is, is when um, it's, it's, a, it's something you're going to see on some lawns as they go dormant. Now, you know, I've, I've read in some of the research I, I, was, I was reading, some people say, you know, if you have like a thicker lot, if your grass is thicker, you're going to have that. Um, if you're, and, and some say it's the difference in soil temperature between, um, you know, certain areas and where the roots are. So there's all kinds of theories around what actually causes it. I could not actually find a clear cut answer as far as what causes, uh, causes the appearance like, uh, where is it? Where's what am I looking for? Like that. So some of you guys may have your lawn looking like that right now. Um, the one, the one thing that was common is that it's considered to be a, a frost injury or the first time your, your lawn sees cool or like like a cold snap so once you go from warm to cold it doesn't have to necessarily be freezing temps but like a but you know a quite a bit quite a big change in um in temperature so say you're having 70 degree days and then you have a day where it gets in the 40s or a couple days in the 40s that's enough to cause this kind of uh, thing to happen but it's all it's all part of your lawn going dormant nothing really to uh to worry about we had that a question last week from who asked that? Actually, I'm gonna get you off here, Higgy Pop. It was Benjamin Kane. He says, why does my hybrid Bermuda lawn look like leopard with green and dormant spots? It almost looks like a pattern. Is that a good sign? My neighbors around me have gone full dormant. Yeah, and so here's the thing about this, Benjamin. So the some people say the theory is that if you have a thicker lawn, you're more likely to have it. And some people say, and, and I don't necessarily believe that. Here's why. My front lawn is mowed at the exact same height as my back lawn. The front lawn had a mild version, a very, very mild version of um, of this, very mild version of this going on. The back lawn just fell off and went dormant fairly, fairly evenly. Like it, either there's some areas of the lawn that stay green longer, but as far as having this pattern, that wasn't a thing that I experienced this year. And you're talking about two lawns that are within, you know, 100 feet of each other and that are mowed at exactly the same height. So. I don't necessarily think that it has anything to do with the thickness or the uh, of, of the grass. It's just um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what causes it, but it is something. That, but but your lawn, uh, the first time your lawn sees a a drastic change in temperature, typically um, to cold, is when you are you're more prone to uh, to see the leopard spots. But it's just something that happens as the lawn goes into dormancy. Nothing to worry about. And uh, and yeah. So that was a question from last week. I promise I'd, I'd look into it. Don't really have a complete answer as to why it happens, but I can tell you it's nothing to worry about, and that some of the theories that I, I looked at uh, didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But it, it's the one thing that was consistent is that whenever your lawn sees a, a drastic change in cool temperature, is when you're likely to see it, and it's all part of dormancy. Nothing to get worried about. All right, next up is Papa Mo's Low. He says I winterized my mowers, and wouldn't you know. The warm, warmer temps have turned my grass green. It needs mowing one more time. Aw, shucks. So you mean you have to break your mower out and get them, get them dirty and go out there and mow one more time? Here's the thing. I, I, might not, I might not mow only once and then winterize them again. I might mow and just leave them that way until, like, let's say until mid-December. I wouldn't go through your winterizing process again until, uh, until mid-December because if your temps are anything like what uh, we're having here in Georgia... It's gonna be it's gonna be relative. I'm gonna say mild, but it's gonna be. Let me, I'm looking here. 60s, 50s, 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 60s, 40s. So it's it's the 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 mean temperature is is gonna be in the in the 50s, mid 50s for the next 10 days. So 
you may get more than one Mo Papa Mo's low, so I wouldn't be too quick to uh, to, to rewinterize once you get out there and cut it. And who knows, you know, if you, you get there, you start mowing it, you'll probably stimulate a little bit fresh growth, maybe get a little bit more green out of it, you know, just uh, maintain whatever height you were at, I would say, keep that same height. I wouldn't do any big changes as far as going up or down in height of cut. But, uh, but yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy that you get a little bit more green for a little bit longer. Next up is Mr. Doug 350Z with the twin turbo package. He says, happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, Doug? Hope you're doing well, sir. And then next we got Jackie Bear. You know, Jackie Bear is always like the first one. I, I it literally, I assume, I'm not sure how, how he's doing it. He, I, I guess he just, throughout the day, um, obviously he's a subscriber of the channel, but throughout the day, I think he just checks the channel and sees whenever the live stream goes, whenever I post it. Because literally, as soon as I schedule the live stream, like he's always the first one within like, within 30 minutes, he's like uh, posting a, a comment in the, in like the, the, uh, the scheduled live stream. So not sure exactly how you're doing that, sir, but I do appreciate the support. I really, really do appreciate it. All right, Ben Rayham is up. Rayham is up next. He says, thanks for the live stream. I, thanks for coming to hang out, man. You know, if, I guess, like I said, if you guys show up, uh, we'll do the show. So you guys keep showing up. So we keep doing the show, right? That's, uh, that's the way that works. Next up is Mr. Uh, Twain's World. He says, uh, hello, Aaron. So, you know, I get called Rob. I've, not, I've never been called Aaron. I get called Rob a lot because B, I think it's because B is next to N uh, on the keyboard. So people are typing, they just type Rob and hit N real quick. And it's uh, that's the, instead of hitting N. So I think that's why um, why that happened. But I've never been called Aaron. Aaron, but uh, I'll take it, Dwayne. Hopefully you're doing well, sir. I see you're still pumping out content, so you're doing better than a lot of us other long care YouTubers, so keep going, sir. That's always good. All right, another question now from Mike Harvey around herbicides. He says, hey, Ron, so I sprayed Prodiamine, Image, and Princep, and I'm not very happy with the results. I have POA everywhere, even places where I know I sprayed heavy. What do I do now? There's so much POA. Well, um, what time, what would be interesting to find out, um, Mike, is when did you spray? Like what time of year did you did you spray? Um, I got my pre-emergent down. I did my um, my Spectacle Flow app in like early September. So like I got my, my, uh, my pre-emergent down earlier than most people would say you need to do it, but I also don't have any POA in my lawn. So I'm not sure when you did the... Um, the Prodiamine, Princep, and Image combination. It is a good combination. It does do a great job uh, as far as keeping POA out of your lawn, but you have to get it down before it germinates. So to answer your question now, now that we're here, how do you get rid of it? Um, the, the best, and I think you have, I'm pretty sure, yeah, you have warm season grass because you would be spraying um, Image if you didn't, hopefully not. But uh, the, the your best option, in my opinion, for to, to take care of the POA now, um, Mike, is to use uh, certainty. So as far as most people think about certainty as a herbicide that is great for sedges, and that's what it's really its claim to fame is it's really good for sedges, but it's also very, very effective against POA annua. So this is a, a, a great option as far as a post-emergent herbicide to kill POA. You can use image, but it's going to be really it's going to really slow. And uh, and frankly, I would just say certainty is gonna is gonna be your jam. Like I I used this in in a combination last year on the neighbor's lawn in, in early this spring when it was still um, it was like late winter. Did a great job cleaning up all the all the poe and other uh, other trash in his lawn. So now that you're here, certainty is what I'm gonna say to uh, to go with. You can get it uh, at the golf course lawn store. We have that in stock. Um, and, uh, and that's what I would say to use for POA. What I, what I'll say as well is if, uh, make sure you use surfactant with it, you know, actually, let me just go here and I can show you. So if you go to the store, go to weed killer, what you're going to want is certainty and a surfactant. So really these two, you know, if you, if you want to throw in some marker dye as well, not a bad idea, but really as far as just from a standpoint of just what you need to kill the POA, kill weeds, uh, certainty and a uh, good surfactant, this, these two, will uh, will get you taken care of. So sorry you're dealing with that. Again, when it comes to pre-emergent, earlier is better. I can't stress that enough. I know a lot of people, you know, they, the, the, the problem is the way the guidance on, on, um, on pre-emergent is often conveyed doesn't really, in my opinion, doesn't really impress on pop on people the importance of getting it down early. Like you'll, you'll hear that, you know, you wanna get your fall pre-emergent down before soil temps start crossing 70 degrees going cooler because that's around when POA will begin um, kicking off, begin germinating, right? In the spring, before um, before average soil temps are 55 degrees, so that's when crabgrass starts germinating. But the idea is a little bit early, and I can't I can't say this enough, it's like my mantra, a little bit early when it comes to pre-emergent is 
always better than right at 70 degrees or even later. You you want to be a little bit early is always good. You're not going to hurt it's not going to hurt you to be down a little bit early. So in in your case Mike, I'm not sure if you're still in here. If you can chime in when you applied it. If you did the Prodiamine Prince up image combination like late September, October, then I'm not I'm not surprised that you're getting some POA in your lawn. Keep in mind that we our our fall, this fall, it's cooled off faster um, than it than it did uh, this time last year. So last year it was fairly mild going into. In other words, last year like the entire time from from like September until till we got really into December, it was it was in the 50s for the most part. We didn't get any real cold snaps. Last uh, the last. Uh, Few weeks prior, we had several days, really a week or so, when when we had temps in the 30s, 40s, and that's and that's enough. You know, that's that cool temps is enough to really um, to really kick off uh, getting you know a lot of, getting a lot of the, the cool season weed problems that you're that you're seeing. So, I would say that the the prodiamine, the combination you're using, it does work. But if you applied it later than if you applied it after the poster began germinating, that's why you're you're seeing the problem you're you're having. So pick up some certainty, use some surfactant along with it, and that should take care of uh, some poa. Not should it will take care of it. And then the application you've already done should prevent new germination, should prevent fret, uh, more germination from coming in. So sorry you're dealing with that. And uh, yeah, you know the good thing is we got we have a, a great post emergent herbicide that'll take care of it. And if you you know if you have any other questions definitely let me know. Um, the only thing I'd say, remember, if you're going to go with certainty, use surfactant with it for, for best results. So hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, definitely hit me up in the comments. Guys, and a, Jay Brooks could not have said it said better. So this is happy Veterans Day to all those looking for some good turf guidance. Indeed. So for all those who who serve this great country of ours, as well as those who supported all those uh, all those that serve, because remember it's a team sport, right? It's not like people that run off and that join the Marines, Navy, Air Force, um, Army. Uh, it's not like they do it alone. There's always typically someone back at the fort holding it down. So to both the the ones that were you know make, sacri making the big sacrifice to, to protect our ability to have awesome lawns and to have YouTube live streams and all this kind of stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, definitely enjoy your special day. And for those that support them as well, uh, again, thank you for your sacrifice and your service. All right, Dwayne is up next. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Do you plan to continue scarifying throughout the do dormant season to lower the amount of cleanup in the spring? Nope, not really, Dwayne. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep uh, catching. So I'm going to keep uh, bagging the clippings. I'm well, not bagging, but I'm going to keep using the uh, the grass catcher on the front of the, uh, the outlet. And uh, that will be, that's what I'm going to do to minimize the amount of debris that goes into the lawn and, and it should reduce the amount of cleanup that I have to do in the springtime. Because keep in mind, you know, up until this year, a, a short of uh, scalping time and 4th of July, I never really uh, caught a lot of my clippings. So the fact that the majority of, I mean, it's not perfect, right? The catcher doesn't grab 100% of them, but if it catches, you know, 85, 90% of what comes off the um, off the turf when you're cutting it, that's going to do a lot as far as reducing the amount of debris that I'm going to have to clean up next spring when I, I scalp. The nice thing too, and I'm really looking forward to it, is because the uh, the, the turf rake, the scarifier that the that the the outlet, that cartridge that I have, even after I scalp, which I'm not going to scalp with the gallon, after after I scalp. You know, whatever doesn't I doesn't get goes in the basket. That turf rake is going to make quick work of picking up all the debris that's in the lawn. So I'm really really excited, man. I'm excited to see, you know, more than anything else. You guys are asking like what new products I'm going to try next year. I'm excited to see uh, if I when I put that system the, the that mower on the lawn early in the season, how the results are going to be with it. That, that's what I'm really looking forward to trying out next year. So. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna uh, scarify now. Uh, again, there's not a, not a real, lot of reason to do it. I'm mowing maybe once a week. The lawn doesn't even really need it, and you know what's coming off is hardly anything. Like the last time I mowed, I mowed the entire back lawn, the entire back lawn, and it didn't even fill up like a third of the catcher. So the grass isn't really even growing right now. I'm just doing it just because I want something to do and I want to kind of have still have my stripe action. But uh, but there's not much to really to to this, that that's going to come out. So so the answer to your question is no, and uh, we'll see next spring how it uh, how it does how it'll do. All right, so Mike Harvey is back. He has a follow up question on his po his dilemma with Poa. He says, 
uh, so I can get this come up. He says, should I reapply with spectacle or respray prodiamine? Should I spray everything with Celsius? Can I mix Celsius and prodiamine? Okay, Mike, Mike, calm down. You're, you're, you're okay, man. So what I would do, the only thing I would spray right at this point to to get rid, to take care of the poet, take care of the, of the problem you have in your lawn right now is certainty. This is what I would use, certainty and a surfactant. Again, we got both of them in stock at the golf course lawn store. You can pick them up there. That is what I would use to take care of the POA. There's no re there's no need to apply more pre-emergent at this time. If you want to do another, if you want to get your another application down um, like January timeframe, like that could work, but there's no reason to, to do more. Like the, the, the pre-emergent that you applied is working. It is going to, it is working. It's just that you, again, if the, if the POA is already germinated, it's the ability for pre-emergent to, um, what you're relying on in that concoction, in other words, right? You're putting down Celsius, I'm sorry, you're putting down um, Prodiamine, Princep, and Image. Image is the one that really has the ability to kill the, um, to kill POA, and it's, and it's not great at it. It's very slow acting as far as a herbicide for killing POA. So you, so to get the most out of that concoction, you really want to apply it early. You want to apply it before before the POA shows up. In your case, it's already here. The Prodiamine and the Princep are still going to work. Just once you knock them back with some certainty, you should be in much better shape. So I wouldn't, don't panic and start mixing a bunch of stuff and um, and, and throwing a bunch of other things down on the lawn. I would not use, cell, I would not mix Celsius with Prodiamine in this case because Celsius isn't great for POA. It's not, it's not going to do a very good job against against Poanual, so you'd be wasting it. And you've already done Prodiamine, which that application, if you did it correctly at the correct rates, is working. It's just it was applied after that POA already began germinating. So get, get you some certainty, get some surfactant, smack it with that, and you should be in good shape. With And with certainty, given the temps that we have now, I'm not sure where in the country you are, but figure within 10 days, 10 days you're gonna start really seeing it yellowing pretty badly, and then it will, um, then it will really It'll really die off. It'll, it'll go off. So, so hope that helps, sir. Don't go and don't go panic and put down Prodiamine and Celsius. There's no reason reason to do that because one, Celsius isn't going to do anything for you in this case. It's not going to work. All right. So we have our first super chat of the evening. Thank you so much, Doug. I really, really do appreciate it, sir. Super chat received. He says, hey, Ron, speaking of new products, any idea when the new Honda GXE EGX motors will make their way to entry-level uh, real mowers? Is that the new, um, the electric mower, the electric uh, uh, mower? You got me you got me looking here. I think that's the the model number for their um, their electric, uh, like it's a replacement to the GX, to like the GX160, the one that's on the True Cuts now, right? Let's see. The GXE... Let's see the GX e mowers. Yeah, so it's, I think yeah, it's, it's going to be the. Um, hmm. Let me see here. Well, I can't. I'm not finding it very. I'm not finding. Yeah, the EGX. Yeah, so, so the electrical power unit. I don't know, Doug. I, I would expect. I would. I don't know when they're going to. Whenever um, True Cut or who else uses them? True Cut or California Trimmer or McLean. What will go to those? I imagine they're going to be more expensive. So here's the thing. So it's the one thing you, you got to prepare for is whenever the the real mower manufacturers do switch to uh to these and actually we'll we'll show you here really quick what i'm talking about uh switch, switch, switch to these guys the new honda the next generation of efficient convenient and friendly operation their electrified power unit so when they switch to these they're going to be more expensive um you know one thing i haven't i haven't looked into these is to see what kind of battery what kind of runtime you get out of them i'm not sure from a battery standpoint like how much uh how much jam you get, but they're going to be more expensive. Kind of like whenever you buy an Allet or any any electric reel mower, you pay a lot of the money up front, right? The money you're not spending on gasoline, you're spending on batteries and the fact that you're not, you're just, you know, that, that they're trying to recoup some of their costs. So I, I have no idea what those power units are going to cost, but I would not be surprised if they added, you know, between five hundred to a thousand dollars to the cost of the um, to the cost of the mower. I, I, I'd imagine if they only added five hundred, I'd consider that a, a steal. But I, I think it's probably going to be more than that. So I wouldn't be too much of a. I wouldn't be praying too hard for them to show up because I, I, if I had to guess, they're going to they're be pretty expensive. They're going to be pretty expensive when they do um, when they do make it there. So it's a question for the manufacturers. You know, reach out to to McLean or Trimmer and or um, or uh, True Cut. And you can ask them. I know that TrueCut has gone away from Honda and has gone to the, uh, is it the Champ engine? 
they're orange. Like if you look at uh, some of the mowers that Real Rollers was um, that they had in stock and were selling this year, um, it was the Champ engine. And I know they moved to that, uh, you know, because of the supply chain shortage of getting the GX engines. So perhaps the next thing from the Champ engines will be to perhaps go to the uh, the EGX. But again, it's it's going to be expensive, and given given the demographic and the and the price point they are they are after. I uh, I think that they it, you know it's it's probably going to be a while. They're going to probably continue to, to find inexpensive or less expensive and more readily available gas powered options before they move to uh, to electric. So, just something to keep in mind. And thanks for the super chat, sir. I really do appreciate the support. Thanks for all the support. All right, Dwayne's World is up next. He says, "Hey Ron, on the topic of herbicides." What is your opinion of using MSM turf to remove rye in the spring? Would you go use MSM or go with Celsius Certainty Combo? Um, I've never used MSM turf, so I can't. I don't. I can't comment on it. I don't. I don't know how well it would work. I mean, if, it, if it's it's a the the most common herbicides that I've heard of people using for removing uh, rye grass in the spring um, are uh, Celsius, obviously, um, and Katana. I've heard about those both being really good options. I'm sure there's others out there as well too. That'll do it. So, uh, certainty uh, will kill a lot of cool season grass as well. So, you know, that could be an option. But really, I would just say Celsius. Uh, you know, the, the the thing is, man, with, with if you've noticed, the, the price of all this stuff is going up. Like in the price of Celsius, price of certainty, all this stuff uh, goes up. So really, you know, I don't I don't know that I would I'd be in a, in a rush to mix certainty along with Celsius to get rid of uh, rye grass in the spring. Celsius by itself will do a good job. And it's also pretty mild on Bermuda. So as far as herbicides go that are effective, yet also mild for your uh, Bermuda grass, Celsius is a um, is a good is a good option. I, MSM turf, I can't I can't comment on it because I've never used it, and I've, I've never actually I've never used it for the purposes that you're you're talking about either. As far as um, as far as removing rye grass, I, but people that that have that that I have spoken to. They've all mentioned um, they mentioned Celsius. They said if you, you're gonna get one, get Celsius, and then if you want something a little bit cheaper, go with Katana. Uh, I've not had anyone up and other than you uh, mention uh, MSM Turf. I'm not saying it can't work. I've just never. It's, not, it's just not one of the most com more common options that I hear about when it comes to removing rye grass in uh, in the springtime. And keep in mind, the, one of the big benefits of Celsius is that it is milder, and, and you're gonna be spraying it at a time when the lawn is transitioning out of dormancy. So you know, if you if you've already got some on in stock, or you're, you're already or you think about a reason to pick some up, that would be a good reason, and you're gonna use it throughout the uh, throughout the season to to treat broadleaves, to treat spurge, and uh, you know other other problem children in your in your warm season lawn. So that's that's my thoughts on it. I can't sorry give you my thoughts on MSM turf because I've never used it. All right, Isaac uh, Momperaus says like button smash. Thank you so much, Isaac. And for the 65 of you that are in here now, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button, I would really, really appreciate it. Guys, also keep in mind, uh, remember we are giving away the hat tonight. So the way you enter to to to, uh, to win the hat uh, is you have to go on last week's live stream and leave a comment. Something about how you're gonna dominate the your neighborhood next year, or how you're gonna create the lawn that your neighbors are gonna envy, something along those lines. And that's all you have to do to enter. That's all you have to do to be entered to have the chance to win the hat. You only have to enter uh, enter one comment. Doing a bunch of comments isn't going to improve your chances because it's only it only it deduplicate. It dupl if you have multiple multiple times you enter does not help you. You're just spamming the comments and it doesn't really do anything as far as increasing your chances. So if you want to have a chance of winning a hat, and I've got some others here. I've got a couple other cool hats. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys another one here. This is the one we're giving away tonight. I'm gonna show you guys one. I'm not, and I'm not sure if this one will ever go up for grabs, but it's this one is 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 so pretty. This right here. Take a look at this. This is actually the one I sh I should give away tonight, given that it's it's uh, it's Veterans Day, right? I mean, so you got. We might actually do that. Maybe maybe we'll switch it up. Maybe you know what? I I really like this hat. Never worn, as you can tell, brand new, never used, but in like in in honor of Veterans Day, you know the camo. With the uh, the flag on the back, that's pretty appropriate, I would think, right? It's a pretty clean hat. What do you guys think? So, what do you guys think in? Oh, and also let me get um, you know, let me make sure I get Doug up here as the show sponsor. Uh, I, I, Doug, three fifty Z twin turbo, I think we're gonna do TT big turbo. Um, 
There we go. Your name in lights, Doug. Appreciate you. Um, so what do you guys think? I, I This is the one that we were doing, but then there's also the Veterans Day hat. There's also this one. What do you guys think? You guys, you guys can chime in here and let me know down in the in the comments which one uh, which one you guys uh, which one you guys think we should do. I, I think we're gonna do this one because this this one is is pretty sweet, and I, I it's gonna it's gonna pain me to uh, to let this one go. But the white one that's I think this one we're gonna do tonight. So we're not gonna leave it up to the audience. We're probably gonna do uh, we're gonna do this guy. This is the one the one I said we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna stick with. Final answer. Final answer. All right, next up is Tutrilla saying, hey, Ron, happy Friday, everyone. What's going on, Tutrilla? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream, sir. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Colin Potter has a question. He says, too late to put out Headway G, antifungal. What to do if I put down pre-emergent? Was an overall success, but still have some weeds popping through. Apply 2,4-D as needed in the winter. Uh, yeah, so as far, this is a multi-part question, uh, Colin. So as far as putting out Headway G, the fungicide, yes. I, I was late to do my November application. I did my November app, if you guys follow my YouTube stories, uh, just this week. With all the rain coming in, I was like, hey, you know what, why not? We'll put it down now. So um, I was, uh, like, I don't know, a week late from getting my, um, my November fungicide app down, but I did get it down. So to answer, yes, you can do that. As far as um, applying 2,4-D, mm, uh, it you know I, again the, the big thing with herbicides I don't know I, I don't know I've never 2,4-D is not one I've ever I've ever heard of anyone spraying this time of year but I, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work Colin if you've already got some and it's labeled for the weeds that you're targeting then by all means yeah so so what, so what you're gonna find is you put down your pre-emergent and to your point you're getting it's doing a pretty good job of keeping most of the weeds away if 2,4-D one you already have it and then it's labeled to take care of the weeds that you do have growing through, then yeah, why not apply it? I mean, check the label and see if there's any temperature restrictions. I believe the temperature restrictions on 2,4-D, if memory serve me, are, are, are mainly on the higher side as far as like not spraying when it's too hot. Um, I imagine there is a lower limit too, but we shouldn't be anywhere near that as yet. So just check the label and make sure that what is in the, um, that what is uh, the weeds you're trying to target are, um, are, it's, it'll be effective for, but yeah, to answer your question, yes, and maybe. So yes to headway, and as far as the, uh, the 2,4-D has a herbicide, should, should work as well, as long as, um, it's labeled for the weeds that you are targeting. That's the big thing when it comes to herbicides. All right, next up is, uh, DH Design and Painting saying good evening ron enjoying the rain here in georgia yeah man you and me both it's been a um it's been a nice few days here as far as um as far as rainfall which is good which is nice you know it's been we've been in i would say a drought but we definitely haven't had our fair share of rain this time of year and uh it's uh, i'm glad that we're finally getting some um we're finally getting some to um to 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 like give give the grass region to grow right between the milder temperatures the temps in the 50s and the rainfall the grass is actually the lawns are actually starting to green up you have to get out there and start mowing a little bit now right which is uh which is nice nice problem to have hopefully you are doing well all right lot to learn says here in the south we love a good lemonade yeah we do well there's no lemonade tonight it's just uh it's just just water for me but i, I get you man chick-fil-a is uh, chick-fil-a lemonade is pretty awesome I um I do love um I do love some Chick Fil A lemonade. I drink more of it than I uh, than I sh than I should. Launch to learn it's like good instead of hood. I'm like hood lemonade. What kind of what are you talking about? Hood lemonade? Where you put some Hennessy? Put some Hennessy in your lemonade? Launch to learn. What, what what are we doing here? What what exactly is what is hood lemonade? Never heard of that before. <laughs> All right, uh, Shauna says, have you ever heard of mealy bugs infesting a lawn? So Shauna, I have a confession. This is the first time today, November 11th, 2022, is the first time I've even even, even heard of mealybugs. Uh, it took me quite a while to some time to figure out what those round cotton ball things were. I thought I had a drought issue. I guessed wrong. So no, I don't. I've never heard of. I've never heard of that. So I'm gonna screenshot your question if you don't mind, and it'll be a nice, uh, nice thing, something nice, fun to, to research and, and chat about next week. Right, so no, I've not, uh, I've not heard of mealy bugs infesting a lawn. Tiny cotton ball looking things. I have not seen that in my lawn, or I'm trying to think of any of the lawns around here. 
Not that I can, not that I can recall, but I'll look into it. I'll look into it and, and weigh in and give you some thoughts on it next week if you're okay with that. So, uh, so yeah, sorry, not more help this evening on that on that particular topic. All right, next up is NMS Auditor 1A, not 1B, but 1A, the first auditor. He says, I am in North Mississippi and Tiffway went almost completely dormant. Then, with all the warm weather, he thought it was spring and about 60% of the lawn green up, cold weather on the way now. Yeah, so you do have that, some of the, the up and down, up and down. You just enjoy it. I mean, if you want to get another mow in, you can. Like, get out there and just, you know, run your mower on. If you want to just give it a nice little cleanup cut, it's not going to hurt anything. I did, but then I'm crazy. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, it's don't don't get too attached to it. It's not going to get completely green, but you know, you can uh, you you can see what the green fuzz, you know, the the, the springtime dormancy look could look like uh, just now, right? But yeah, it's not. It's definitely not going to stick around NMS. We're already man. This year is flying by. We're almost midway through November. Like a couple of weeks from now, it's going to be Thanksgiving, and then December, and then. We start planning next season, right? It'll be this year will be over before you know it. So, so yeah, yeah, I I am with you on the. Um, I'm seeing the same thing you are as far as seeing the lawn green up a little bit due to the the cold snap that we had in October, uh, like chilling out a little bit, cooling off a little bit. All right, Robert Majuro says is up next. He says my last comment was pilot talk. Uh, creeping in WX weather. So what WX is weather. Okay. He says, uh, by the way, my, Z my grass Xeon is doing the spotty things, uh, as well, but in much larger areas. I thought it was poor fertilizing. No, it's, pr it's, it's just going dormant. It's just going dormant. Just, just, uh, just check, taking his time to, uh, to check out, uh, Robert. I wouldn't w w worry about it. And for those of you that just joined this live stream and wondering what Robert's talking about, it is, uh, no, it's this is what is, no, no, man, why can, there we go. This is the correct one. It's this look, uh, the, um, the leopard spots or the cheetah spots, whatever you want to call them. Uh, if your lawn looks like that, that, I guess in his case with his, um, with his zoysia lawn, the spots are, are a lot bigger. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. It's gonna, it's just your lawn checking out and, and, uh, and, getting ready to go to bed until February timeframe, thereabouts, right? February, March. All right, Derv is up next. He says, hey, Ron, sorry if this was asked already. I'm in South Carolina, similar temps as Georgia. Is it too late for a pre-emergence such as prodiamine? Uh, is it too late? No, but is it, are you behind? Are you, did you wait too long? Yeah, so it's still, I mean, I, I would still apply it, but really the, the best time to apply, get your pre-emergent down would have been September timeframe, uh, derv, like early September is when I did mine. So we are well past that. We're like two months past the, uh, the window when it opened to be able to do that. So yeah, I mean, can you still apply it? Yes. Are you going to get, uh, as good results out of it as if you had applied it in September, like when it was, was ideal time? No, but there's still, but you still, there's still all the, all the rest of this fall and uh, the uh, the early spring that you'll get some benefits from it from from getting your application down. So yeah, I still would apply it, but um, but yeah, the, the time to apply pre emergent If you want to say a if, with you being in South Carolina, if you want a a rough um, uh, schedule to go by, what I do anyway is late uh, late February is that was the latest that I get my pre emergent down for the springtime. I know some people like to wait till March. But if you miss it or it warms up a little bit earlier, then you're going to have problems with, with crabgrass growing. Remember, the, the, the magic of pre-emergent is in the name. Pre-emergent, prior to the weeds emerging, is when you have to have it down. So for the springtime, late February is when, I, is when I'll do that. That's like my cutoff, like then or even a little bit earlier. And then for the fall, September. Like the first week of September is a good time to get it done. Some people like to wait till later, but, you know, I have no, I don't have any weeds in my lawn right now. And I did my, I applied my pre-emergent September. So people that, so there's people that will tell you, you know, it's too early. Don't, you don't need to do it then. You can wait till the end of the month, but then you're going to start having, you're going to have power, you're going to have breakthrough, you're going to have all kinds of um, um, issues. And there's really not any negative to doing it a, a few weeks earlier. It just really isn't. So, so yes, if you still want to apply a derv, go for it. You're not going to get the full benefits of it, but it's still going to be better than if you don't do anything. Just be prepared to use a, uh, a post-emergent herbicide to treat, you know, whatever weeds you have that come through, um, you know, due to not having the pre-emergent down um, in, in a couple months ago. 
Robert Wallace is up next saying, happy Friday, Ron. What's going on, Robert? Hope you're doing well, sir. Hope you're doing well. Got to meet Robert at the uh, the turf party. Um, what, what, what fan were you, Robert? You were in Orange. Were you, are you a Clemson? I think you're a Clemson fan, right? Is it Clemson or, uh, I think it's Clemson, not Auburn. It was one of those two, one of those two teams. I forget which one it is. Don't, don't cuss me out. Um, but it was one of those teams. So that, that's how I remember you because the, the guy wearing the, wearing the, um, the bright orange. So, so yeah, man, thanks again. And also thank you for your service, Robert. I think you also serve. So appreciate that. Happy Veterans Day. Next up is Edwin O. He says, hey, Ron and everyone. Happy Friday. Email the picture. What weed is this and what should I use, if anything? Thanks in advance. I'm not sure if I got your email, Edwin. Um, it's kind of hard to do. That looks like Sedge. What is that? I don't know. Yeah, it looks like Nuttedge. It looks like Nuttedge to me. Um, we can take a look at it, guys. We can all look at it together. And you guys can tell me if you agree with me or not. If I can get Edwin's picture out here. That looks... Well, I mean, it's, it, or is it, or is it rye? I don't know, man. It, it's, it's, the leaf isn't, leaf isn't quite, now that I look at a bigger picture of it, the leaf isn't quite, um, it doesn't have like the triangle. It's not, it's not like, uh, it doesn't have the crease in the middle like, uh, like sedges do. But we'll take a look. We'll, we'll bring it before the audience and let you guys, um, you guys weigh in. Look, it could be annual ryegrass is what that, that could be. Take a look at that, guys. What do you think that is? Um, I can't, I'm trying to explain it a little closer here. If I can scroll a little closer and give you guys, nope, I can't. But it looks, it, lo it very well could be annual ryegrass. I, I was gonna say sedges, but it looks, it looks like annual ryegrass, um, Edwin, to me. So anyone else that's here that's uh, that that is up on your weeds, feel free to chime in on your thoughts of what you think that weed is. I believe it's like a, an annual ryegrass is what I'm gonna go with. All right, uh, Mike Harvey says, I sprayed in mid to late September. Yeah, I mean, um, it means I, I, I literally was putting my pre emergent down literally the first week. The first week of September is when I got, is when I did mine. Um, but that should, I mean, late, is it mid or late? Because late late is different from mid. I mean, the, if, if, you, if you sprayed the end of September, which is like early October, then that, then I'm not surprised you're getting a little bit of breakthrough. At any rate, it doesn't matter. At this point, I would say just um, just treat the POA with with certainty. That 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 will take care of it. You got it down the month of September, which is good. But next year, you know, because not not you've learned what's um you know what can happen um, by doing a mid to late September app. Next season, let's just pump it up a, a few weeks earlier. So like literally September first, get your pre-emergent app down, and then see how what kind of results you get. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, at the reduction of weeds that you're going to have in your lawn if you uh, if you go that route, if you go that route. So guys, feel free to chime in. I mean, it looks <coughs> it looks. <coughs> sorry, I'm fighting a cold here too. Some people were saying it looks like nut sedge, <coughs> but if you look close, I mean, the, the pictures didn't get big enough on the screen, but I'm looking at it a bigger version of it. And I don't think that is, <coughs> I don't think that's a nuts edge. It might be, it could be, but look, I almost think it's annual ryegrass, if you want my opinion. One of the, it's one of those two. One of those two, but yeah, guys, feel free to weigh in on what you guys think Edwin is dealing with in his lawn. All right, next up is Jackie Bear says, I work from home and bored a lot is a secret to the early comments. That's how you do it, okay. Fair enough, because literally, man, you're always like the first one. I, I like, I'll, I'll schedule it, and then boom, you're you're like thirty minutes within thirty minutes. He's like you're up there with like your. I, I think it's like a. I'm not sure if you're short, like a guy waving like uh, dollars or just a wide guy waving. It's it's always the same emoji every single time. But at any rate, I notice it and I appreciate it. So, thanks for the support. All right, and then NMS uh, Auditor One says spectacle flow in September, no POA, definitely worth the price. Yeah, that is uh, that is too uh, something else as well. I did use uh, spectacle. This is what I applied on my lawn and Alex's lawn and the um, our project lawn, the neighbor's lawn, and none of our lawns have any POANUA um, in them. You know, none. And again, it's, it should because spectacle is expensive. It's really as far as a, um, a, a, a herbicide that, or a pre-emergent, uh, especially when POA is what you're trying to keep away, it's really tough to beat spectacle. Really, really tough. Great, 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 um, great pre-emergent. Excellent. Wor worth the price, I think. 
All right, next up is Mike Harvey. He's back. He says, I, right, I meant certainty, not Celsius. Can that be mixed with another pre-emergent treatment? You could, you could, but again, I don't, I don't necessarily think that you need it. I mean, if here's the thing. The only way I'd apply more pre-emergent now is if you went back and checked your math or check your numbers and you said, you know what? I messed up on my application rate. I didn't, I didn't apply it at the correct rate or I didn't apply it evenly. And I'm going to do like a half rate application now to make sure that I, you know, I get the, the right amount of active ingredient down into the soil. That's, that is the only way I would, I would consider mixing prodiamine with uh, certainty. If you do that, right. Um, if you do that, so here's the thing, I'm not a huge fan of doing it because really the, for, to get the best results out of out of uh, certainty, you really want to use surfactant with it, and surfactant is going to make some of the pre-emergent like adhere to the leaf. It's going to it's going to negatively affect your ability to get it down into the soil. So you're kind of working against yourself, but you can you can. What what I would say is this: if you if you go back and you check your numbers and you say, you know what, I didn't apply enough prodiamine, or I didn't apply it the rate that I thought I did, and you want to make certainty with it, you can. But what I would do is um, I would wait till the following day before I watered it in. So the PO is driving you crazy. So let's definitely make sure we use surfactant um, with the certainty because that, that's gonna give you the best chances for getting rid of the PO annua. But what I would not do is apply the, the certainty and, and pre-emergent blend and then water it in right away. Make sure you let it dry so that it, you see you're giving it a chance to really adhere to the, uh, to the leaf of the POA and then the following day or the day after, you can even give it two days if you wanted to, and then you can water the prodiamine in, and then, you, and then you're you're going to be good to go. You'll be uh, you'll be just fine. So uh, so yes, that can work, um, and it just saves you the time of having to do two apps. Just make sure you don't water it in right after application. All right, good question, Mike. Sounds like you're getting a, a plan together as far as how you're going to get rid of that that poa. And again, if you if you're certain that you applied the princeps um, prodiamine. Com and um, an image combination at the correct rates, at the rates you were after, I would not put more down. I would just go out and just spray certainty. I just, I really wouldn't. There's no reason to go and put more prodiamine down. If you're, you're certain you did the application properly and you watered it in or it got rained in after application. That's the other thing too, right? Is with pre-emergent, it needs to be watered in for it to, for it to work. So I'm pretty sure you, you, you know that and I'm pretty sure you did, but just something else to keep in mind. All right, next up is Mr. Donald McFarland. Donald says, hey, Ron. Ooh, are you our, that's not the, um, you know what, you asked me last time, that's not Starscream. I forget who, which which, uh, which Transformers, which Decepticons those were. But anyway, he says, hey, Ron, I uh, finally got real rain here in middle Georgia. You and the rest of us, sir. The Bermuda is free, is greening up again. He's freeing up again, but I think you meant greening up again. It is, but don't get too attached to it. Don't think, don't get out there and start throwing down fertilizer thinking, oh, life is good. We're, you know, I'm going to get out there and slam more fur on the lawn and it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's going to be short-lived. It's going to be very short-lived. You know, if you get a, uh, you know, if, if, it, if a couple weeks from now it still looks the same way, consider that a win, but I would not get too attached to, uh, to getting out there and spraying or applying a bunch of nitrogen on the lawn. I, I just I, I just wouldn't. Enjoy the little green up and get out there and mow if you want. But uh, but outside of that, just enjoy the little little sparkle of color that you're that you're getting. All right, next up is Colin Potter. He says, I appreciate the long format of this channel and the in-depth response. Way deep uh, normal advice. Keep it up. Love the content. I appreciate that, Colin. It's it's fun. I mean, this time of year, as far as making the actual like YouTube videos, like the non live stream videos, they don't typically do that well. So I I'm think I have a couple ideas for one or two more videos this year that I'm I'm gonna put together and and uh, and put out. But the live stream is a way to answer the questions of people that are still really into their lawns. Because right now, most people don't really care about their lawns, right? They're watching football and doing other things. But the people that are really the hardcore, the you know the, the 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 you know that guy or that gal, are the people that watch a lawn care live stream, right? So this is a great way for me to answer your questions and to interact with you guys, while not putting a lot of effort into producing something that th the majority of people aren't going to watch this time of year because most people don't care about their grass, right? But you're very welcome, sir. I'm glad that you're finding some value out of the content and out of the live stream, and uh, definitely appreciate the support. Really do, really, really do. All right, next up is DJ Kid. He's saying, yo, Ron, stopping by to support your brother. Thanks again for all your help. You are very, very welcome, DJ Kid, and I appreciate the support. It really does mean a lot. It really does mean a lot. <clears throat> all right, Great River Roofing is up next. He says, you did a video on ProScape. Man, that video's, it's been a couple years, it's been a few years. That video is probably 
man, it's at least, it's at least two, at least three years old at this point? Three years? I mean, it's been a while. I know the video you're talking about, it's an older one. So you did a video on Proscape. I found some, worked awesome in my yard. Thank you. Yeah, it's an awesome property. I, I gotta tell you, Lebanon, you know, they don't mess around when it comes to fertilizer. When it comes to fur, they are, uh, they, they know what they're doing. I mean, this, my, probably my favorite fertilizer is um, their Humic Max. Like, I still got some here for nostalgia re uh, purposes. And, uh, you know, the plan next year is to hopefully begin to be able to carry that again. It's, you know, well, hopefully the pricing will also come down on um, on urea and some of the other components that go into it. So it's not going to be, you know, ridiculously expensive. But to your point, Great River Roofing, it's, they make an excellent product. Like, I, I used Proscape for a number of years, and then I... Uh, Found their Country Club line and used some of that, like their uh, their twenty two to twenty two zero sixteen, like their greens grade fertilizer. It's really nice. That's a really nice product as well too. That's not one they really wanted to um, to. Be, it's because it's to be sold to um, sold online. Uh, so so that's why we didn't offer that one in the store. But Humic Max is a pretty a pretty awesome fur in its own right as well. So the fact that you found some Proscape, keep using it, man. It's a good product. Really, really good product. You're not going to go wrong with uh, Lebanon Turf fertilizers. Like they uh, they do a really good job on like their Mesa, like their their slow release uh, methylene, uh, methylene urea is real. It's a really good product. It's not like some of the bonded, like you think about like um, how some of the, um, I don't know, like some, some of the less expensive slow release fertilizers that you'll buy on the market that have that are coated. And the problem is with those is if you ever step on them or they get hit with a lawnmower or just they get any kind of they can kind of damage, they don't release at they're no longer slow release, right? They release at a much faster rate. Whereas the um, the methylene urea, which if you look here, if you guys can see it, you see the little blue, the little blue dots that are in there. The blue dots, that is the slow release nitrogen, the methylene urea that Lebanon um, puts into their fertilizers. And the nice thing about that is if you were to break it. It's, it's homogenous. So if you break it, it doesn't like, you're not like removing a coating or anything like that. It still releases at the same rate. So it's a very good, again, it's more expensive, but like most things in life, you get what you pay for. It's a really good product. And I am happy again to, that, uh, that, that you're, you know, that you, you, you're getting some, uh, some good value out of it. Uh, Great River Roofing. If I can help with anything else, uh, let me know. All right, next up is Blaine Serio. He's uh, got a problem here, man. Blaine's got, got a serious issue. We have to switch back to the other camera for this one. He says, I still haven't dealt with my Dallas grass problem and I'm super late on pre-emergent application. Blaine, you're doing, man, you, you're not making life easy on yourself. Uh, he says, what course of action uh, entails at this time of year? I'm in South Louisiana, thanks. All right, Blaine, so when it comes to Dallas grass, there's not really uh, there's not really a herbicide that is labeled for use on residential lawns, meaning that's, that's supposed to be spraying on residential lawns that will kill Dallas grass. Uh, certainty will injure it. There are herbicides that will injure it, but there's not really anything that's going to control it on, in residential lawns. So your best bet for getting rid of Dallas grass in a residential lawn is to dig it up. So get if you can get out there, and I know it's a pain and time consuming, but literally get out there with like a um, a weed removal tool, and if you you'd be, you'd be surprised at how much uh, progress you can make if you do it, you know, an hour, a couple times a week. You'd be surprised how quickly you can clean up a lawn by physically removing it. That is really your best bet for Dallas grass on a residential lawn. When it comes to pre-emergent, you are late, but still, uh, did, like I was telling the other viewer, Derv, like getting it, uh, in other words, you, you, you'll be better off even applying it now than not applying it at all. So the time to apply pre-emergent really, in my opinion, is like, is September timeframe. You know, early September is what I like to do because I'm, but again, I am the guy that likes to get my pre-emergent down earlier. Like I'm, I'm, I want to be a week, a week or two ahead of when temps are supposed to even um, get to where uh, weeds can be a problem. Because if you think about it, the reason, here's my logic behind this, and you guys can agree or disagree with, it, with me on this, but it's worked well for me. And I explain to you why I'd like to do it the way I like to do it. Like, it's not like whenever you get out there and you put down pre, pre-emergent, whether it's like a liquid or even heaven forbid that you use granular, you put it down, you water it in, it, it immediately gets down into the soil and begins working. Like it's got to, like you've got to, apply the product, it's got to get, it's got to get watered and it's got to wake, work its way down a little bit into the soil 
and then it's going to begin working. And it's not like that happens in a day or two days or three days. It, take, it takes a little while to do that. So getting it done, getting your application done a bit on the early side, again, a couple of weeks early, is not going to hurt anything. It's not. There's, there's literally no negative. There's only upside by getting it done early. In your case, just I mean, you are you are where you are. We don't have we don't have time machines yet, so you can't go back in time and get your pre-emergent down. So just apply it. As far as options go. Uh, you know, prodiamine is a, uh, a good choice. I'll show you here some options. So we'll go over now to the golf course lawn store. I'll switch over here really quick. And you'll go to shop and then weed killer. And then once you're there, you're going to see a couple options for pre-emergence. So you've got dithiapir, which is not a bad option, but, um, you know, and, but this is one I would really, I would really use that in the spring more so than the fall. You can use it now if you want, but really it's, it's a, in my opinion, a better choice for the springtime. For this time of year, um, prodiamine is a, is a, is a better choice to go with in my opinion. So this, this is what I would, uh, I would use on your lawn. I'll put, I'll put a link in the, in the description for you. Um, this is what I would use as far as, let me see, at Blaine. Helps if I actually click on the chat at Blaine uh, pre emergent. Um, this is what I would go with. And again, the, the time to do it would have been September, but it's better do it now than not do it at all. And then you're going to have, you know, a real mess on your hands. So, so hope that helps. When it comes to um, removing the Dallas grass, again, a just like a, a, a weed, a, a, a manual, manually removing it is really going to be. Your best, uh, your best bet, your best bet, and for a tool to do that, let me show you here really quick. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, weed. I'll show you my um, my guy of choices. It looks like a, it's kind of like a, a hook. It's um, yeah, this is it. There it is, the Fiskers, and it's gonna cost. Here's the thing: it's gonna break. It's gonna break the budget on this. This thing is a whole seven dollars is what it's gonna cost you. But this is a great tool for manually removing weeds in your lawn. Let me get it up here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You might be able to find them locally as well, but to make life easier for you, I'm also going to put that in the chat as well. Read removal, removal tool. So there you go. So that, and what I'm referring to is this guy. So Fiskers makes one, there's other people that make them too, but this is really sweet that you simply, you, you, you stick this little fork in at the base and that curved portion will rest against the soil surface and it, you pry it out, it does a really good job pulling, taking the weed, the weed out along with, um, you know, roots and everything. So it does a really good job. I've got a video on this, on that, um, on that particular tool on, uh, on weed removal and using that. Um, so if you want to see like how good a job it can do, I can see if I can, yeah, I can see if I can find it for you here and, um, and send it over to you in case you care. But, um, but yeah, just get that tool for removing the Dallas grass because you're, there's, there's not really a herbicide that you're supposed to spray that, that you're, that you're supposed to spray on residential lawns that will, um, that will take care of it, unfortunately. All right, so back to our next question. Appreciate the question, appreciate the, the, the question and hope that helps you out, uh, Blaine. If you need anything else, uh, definitely let me know. All right, let me uh, go down here and grab a super chat here really quick from Mr. Ben Raham. Thank you so much, Ben. I really do appreciate all of the support. Super chat received. He says, is prodiamine effective in the spring to prevent quack grass slash goose grass? I don't know. I'd have to check the label to see. Um, between, I believe, you know, that's, that's, that's a good question. Let's find out. We can, uh, we can look here really, we can find out here really quick together. I don't know if it's, if it's, uh, if it's labeled for, um, for quack grass or goose grass, but I can, I can tell you really quick. We can take a, a peek here at the label and I will, um, I'll pull it up here and then we'll all know together. So quack. I think I, I want to say that um, that that spectacle. I know spectacle will do those, but I don't know if um, yeah. So goose grass it will, but quack grass it does not look like it. Yeah. So if you look at the label for prodiamine, which we can take a look at here together, I'll bring it up for you guys and load, please. All right, and goose, uh, goose, yeah, there we go. 
So if you, if you look at the label now, you'll be able to see that one of the weeds that it is labeled to treat is, uh, is goosegrass. I don't see quack grass on there. So, you know, chickweed, crabgrass, this is, these are the, are the usual suspects. And I don't see quack grass uh, listed on there, unfortunately. So goosegrass, you're good to go. And there's a note with that. And it, it talks about the, um, the, the rate. Yeah. So in this case for goosegrass, because it's got number five there, so it means a little sub note about it. You may have to do a split app to get them if, if goosegrass is primarily what you're, you're trying to control. So it gives you a rate, but then it goes on to say to uh, a split app might be your way to go to get best results. Um, if your, your main concern is goosegrass, uh, Ben. So great question. Great question. But like, as, as always, the label will uh, will tell us, but it only gets one of the two that you're um, that you're you're concerned about. Goosegrass, it looks like you're you're good to go. Quackgrass, uh, not so much. And appreciate the uh, the super chat, sir. Appreciate the super chat. Thank you for all the support. All right, uh, you're very very welcome, uh, Blaine. No worries at all. If I can help with anything else, let me know. So now the fun part is finding where I left off. All right, here we go. So Great River Roofing says Honda is discontinuing their line of lawnmowers towards the end of 2023. That makes sense. That makes sense as to why the, it's become more and more of an issue to, um, I guess, to get the GX engines. Uh, but you know, the funny thing about the GX is that, is that they're not only, I mean, being used with mowers is one thing, but they're used for a lot of other things too. Like you, you see them in generators, you see them like on the side of the roads whenever they're doing construction. At night, a lot of times you'll see like little portable generators will have a GX engine running it. So I'm surprised that they are, uh, that they're they're going away from that. But you're saying they're just continuing their, their line of mowers at the end of 2023, or at least of uh, uh, probably the residential mowers. I, 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 I don't believe they're gonna, are they gonna really discontinue all mowers, even their commercial line too? Uh, I would imagine the residential perhaps, but but get rid of everything? Hmm, huh. maybe. All right, next up is Mike. He says, okay, I got it. Certainty was surfactant. I hate POA. <laughs> we all hate POA, man. You're not, you're not alone. We all hate POA. This is my first year using liquid preem and I was hoping for no weeds, was disappointed to see the weed again. I have some Carolina ger, ger, geranium as well too. Yeah, so um, I don't know if certainty is labeled, is labeled for that. I, I, Carolina geranium, I'm not sure what, I don't know what, 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 um, what herbicide is labeled to take care of it, but for POA, it will definitely take care of POA. Like that was surfactant and you're gonna be good to go. That absolutely is gonna do a good job for you. All right, and then uh, Edwin, thank you, Edwin. I got, thanks for the, for the reminder, sir. He says, Ron, don't forget to put Edwin, or don't forget to put the Doug 350Z Twin Turbo's name in lights. I got it done. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you guys keeping me on track. You know, someday, someday, if, if the channel ever gets big, I'll have like an actual, like a moderator that can do that kind of stuff for me. That can like, that will run like all the annotations on the screen and all this kind of stuff. Like, you know, all the really fancy YouTube channels, the bigger ones have, but right now it's like, I got to answer the questions, look, do some moderating as far as like crazy comments and all this kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a full-time job. I'm doing my best guys. I'm doing my best. Doing my best. And then let's see, Shauna says to keep that hat for yourself. So she's saying that this one, the Murica hat, right? We got the camo. I do like camo. Camo with flag on the back. So this is like a, a, a hat that was sent to me as a gift by uh, Josh Shabib. Never worn, brand new hat. Um, but again, the one that we're gonna give away tonight, I think, I, I agree with you, Sean. I think this guy's the one that we're gonna do. This is the, cause this hat I will literally never wear because as, as nice as it is, this is, you know what this hat is great for? Going to barbecues. Like if you're gonna go out to a barbecue or if you're someone that wears a hat to church, you could do that uh, if you're someone that you know. Just just when you're going out to a, to a, to an outing or somewhere where you weren't where you want to wear a hat, but not to do actually lawn work. So if you get this hat, whoever wins it, I mean it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. But I would, given that it's white in color, I would. I mean, it's probably not the best choice for lawn care for for like so lawn work. But up to you. Your your call. It would bug me to no end if it if I got it dirty. But then there's uh there's that. All right, all right. Next up is um, Two Trill says, after seeing that hat, you have to do both now. I thought the red, white, and blue was clean. I do have a, um, I do have another red, white, and blue hat, but it's not, it doesn't have the America thing. You guys wanna see like another, another custom hat? You guys are, you guys are making me break out, show, show off all my, all, my, all my goods. I'll show you guys here real quick here, this one. All right, so this is, I mean, it's red, white, and blue, so I guess it is patriotic, but it's just, Red, white, 
and blue, but it's not like not like the flag or or anything like that, right? So this one is again another another custom hat that never been worn brand new. You can see cardboard still in there. Um, but this is not this is I guess a little less patriotic hat. You know, it's not it's, it's not quite as as patriotic as uh, as the the stars and bars, right? But um, but yeah, stars and stripes rather. So there you go. But um, but yeah, that's a, that's another yet another hat. Another hat that I that I, I probably won't uh, probably won't wear. All right, uh, Ferro Bermuda is up next. He says, "What's up, Ron and everyone? What's going on, Ferro? Thanks for coming to hang out, Daryl. Hope you're doing well, sir. Thanks, Hope you're doing well. And then next up is Travis uh, Travis Winston. He says, "Happy Friday, Golf Course Lawn Squad, and to all the veterans. Thank you for your service. Thank you indeed for all the veterans and those that support the those that actually enlisted and served in the armed forces. Forces, we uh, you know definitely thank you for." Your sacrifice and everything you do to allow us to have a live stream and cool lawns and uh, and and everything else and football and everything else that we all the freedoms that we also um, enjoy. All right, next up is a question from Kevin D. Jones. He says, "Hey Ron, off topic, Adesanya or Pereira? Placing a bet for, for my real more fun? LOL." Uh... I mean, Pereira has beaten him before, right? So you know, once you once he's he's, he's I think he's beaten he's beaten him at least once. Um, and I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, is, he's been Israel. Is he in the last few fights and not last few, the last I don't know, the last half dozen fights or so? He's been pretty boring to watch. You know, he's he's kind of he's kind of gotten on the um, on the uh, Floyd Mayweather um, you know theory of like UFC fighting like a lot of evasion like you know not taking any risk and I get it right you're the champ you don't want to get knocked out you I mean there's a lot of endorsements and everything that goes along with being a champ so you don't want to lose that so I, I get it but as far as being exciting to watch and taking the chances in other words the, the stuff that allowed him to get to where he is now um, you know he's not he's not that same fighter so you, some might say he's smarter but he's a lot less boring to watch I, I mean, I think it, it could be, it could go either way. It could go either way. I think Pereira has a pretty, he has the best chance of anyone that Izzy's fought in his last five fights, five half dozen fights, five, six fights. He's, this guy's got a, um, the best, the best chance to, uh, to get him in, uh, in my opinion. So, but don't, don't, uh, don't bet against a champ. He's a champ for a reason, right? He's a champ for, uh, he's a champ for a reason. So, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. All right, Doug 350Z is up next. He says, speaking of Chick-fil-A, they renamed the Arnold Palmer to Sunjoy. I didn't realize that Chick-fil-A would do an Arnold Palmer for you. I guess they, get, they make they have this, the tea and the lemonade, so I guess it makes sense, but I didn't, I don't think I've ever seen that on the menu. I guess you can just have them make it, right? Yeah, but I've never, I don't recall ever seeing that on the uh, on the menu. But they named it to a, named it a Sunjoy, huh? Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. I think Arnold Palmer is, you know, probably more appropriate, but... Maybe they don't want to use his likeness or whatever. Or think about, you know, worry about getting sued or anything crazy, uh, crazy like that. So maybe that's why they, why they changed the name. As they, why they changed the name of it. All right. Next up is Jason Sewell. So this is a great question here. He says, "I have two questions as I prep for next year. Not one, but two questions." All right. How often should I soil test? That's a good question. And second, with PGR, I saw a video you did uh, two years ago. Uh, and it seems you like the class B and now you favor class A. What helps you decide? So, um, so yeah, so the, uh, the, we'll talk about the soil testing first. As far as soil testing goes, I like to do them at least twice a year. Um, you know, you can do them quarterly if you want, but really twice a year is, is, is the cadence that I like. And here's why. So in the spring, I like to do one prior to the lawn waking up, say February time frame, because it's going to let you know what it helps you develop what your uh, what your fertilization program what your nutrient program can be like for that season right so you see where your deficiencies are and it allows you to know what fertilizer your lawn needs for that season so i'm a big fan of the spring i'm also a fan of doing a soil test in the fall for two reasons one it allows you to measure the effectiveness of your fertilization program throughout the year and then second it allows you to to it gives you time to take a look at the ph and if you are, say you're in Georgia, where, or, or at least in this area where our, our pH tends to be, tends to like to trend lower um, in, the, in the fives, if you, if you were to do a soil test now, or say, or a month ago, you're able to get your lime application down. It gives the lime 
ample time to react with the soil and bring the pH levels back up. So when springtime rolls around, you're good to go, pH should be in good shape, and you're great to start the season off um, you know, with just, just whatever nutrients you, your, uh, your soil needs. So I'm a fan of doing one in the spring and one in the fall for, uh, for those reasons. As far as um, the two different um, types of PGR, yes, you are right. There was a PGR that I used to like. Uh, what was the name of it? It's, um, oh man, I can't, I don't remember the name of it now. Um, but it's a, it's a, to your point, it was a, um, it was a class, it's a class B. It's, let me see, PGR. I'm gonna go back here and look at the name of it. But the, the long short of it is, um, then that, that PGR, you would, um, it was root absorbed. So you would water it in, you'd water it in. It would, um, and it, it did a great job. I, I liked it because it, um, it lasted longer. Um, and that was, it lasted longer and it didn't have any of the tip burn issues that you get with, uh, with Trinexapac ethyl. The problem with it is that it's, uh, the, they it, it they lost their EPA rating. In other words, they it was it was labeled for use for on residential lawns, and then it became no longer labeled for for use on residential lawns. So you really can't use it. Or you're not supposed to use it on um, on residential lawns anymore. So that's why I um so that's why I don't I don't recommend that one. And honestly, now with um with split apps with uh, of Trinexapac ethyl with split apps of um, of Primo. Uh, you get you get great benefits and you don't get the tip burn anymore, right? So that's a that's another that's so a, a lot of the reason why I liked oh I'm I'm drawing a blank on what it was on what the name of it is I'm it's gonna drive me crazy I'm gonna find it here and I will tell you the name because I found I think I found the video I think I, I think I, I think I pulled the link to it down because I didn't want people tied Paclo that's what it is yeah so pa, pa, the active ingredient is Paclo yeah, paclobutrazole. <laughs> my memory, my brain, it came back in my brain. It's paclobutrazole, and the herbicide of the pre emerger was, was tied paclo, tied paclo 2SC. So, yeah, so, so it's, it's a great growth regulator, but unfortunately, it's not labeled for use on residential lawns anymore. So, that's why I stopped talking about it and stopped recommending it. Um, but it was a great product. Great product. Again, no tip burn. Worked at the, as far as effectiveness a bit longer than, um, than Primo. Um, but with Primo now, if you, again, if you just you apply this every two weeks, you don't get the tip burn issues anymore, and uh, it it works well. You know, your lawn literally never comes out of regulation if you apply it every two weeks. So so yeah, the one you're talking about is um, that's what it was called. Type Paclo, the, the the active ingredient is Paclo is Paclo Brut. Uh, I can't. Uh, it's Paclo Brut I don't know. Why I can't say it. Paclo Brutrazol. Um, so if you see any uh, any pre-emerge or any um, uh, growth regulators and it's got Paclo in it or something PAC like PAC, in a lot of cases the active ingredient is that uh, that ingredient. Actually, I'm just finding out. I'll, I'll post it here in the in the chat for you. It's Paclobutrazol. I don't know why I can't why I can't say that. That's that's like that's like my new turf type tall fescue. You guys remember when I couldn't say turf type tall fescue? Uh, but this is the active ingredient in in that in that herbicide but yeah you can't you're not supposed to spray it on residential lawns another negative to it jason is it's expensive it's very expensive so a bottle of that of that pre of that i keep saying pre of that that pgr if memory serves me was like 220 dollars. it was very expensive now and much like a gallon of of um of like of a, a PGR, like of, um, of like Primo, you're never going to go through it on a residential lawn. Like the, you use so little of that product that it would like you'd, you'd go past its shelf life before you really use it up. So really for PGR these days, go with Primo, um, go with some, something that contains tri uh, Trapaxica, um, um, Trapac, oh, the active ingredient in this. I don't know. My, my brain is, my brain is, is shot. Go with this. And I'm a fan of, of um, Trinexapac ethyl and um, a Primo of the four ounce because this on most smaller lawns and on, on say a 4,000, 5,000 square foot lawn, one of these is enough to get you through the growing season and you never have to worry about it going bad, right? Because you're gonna use pretty much this entire bottle up in a year. You don't have like a gallon of it sitting on a shelf that you're just, ne you're just never gonna use it before it, it goes, um, before you, you reach the end of its, of, its, um, of its shelf life. So that's the whole reason behind it. Um, Tide Paclo 2SC is a great product. Can't use it on residential lawns, and it's really expensive. Uh, Primo is a great um, growth regulator, and you can get it now in a four ounce, and it's um, it, 
works just as well because you're using it, you're applying it every couple of weeks. So hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. All right, Nate Moore says it is nuts edge. Nate, Nate thinks it's a nuts edge. What do you guys think? So this is this came in from Edwin. So I agree, Nate. It could it looks kind of sedgy, but if you look at the look at the ones that are close to us here, you see how the leaf is like um, how it's wider and laying off like that. I I, I want to say that's like a looks like almost like annual ryegrass, um, like annual ryegrass to me. Could be it very well could be um, uh, a, a, a nuts nuts edge like you're saying, but I am leaning more towards uh, annual ryegrass. But feel free, anyone else that has thoughts on the matter, want to chime in. Uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, Dixie Hoodbilly is saying wild onion. Okay, so that's what she thinks it is. Possible. And um, and then uh, Robert saying, yes, Ron, it was Clemson and my pleasure. Yep, so it is Clemson. I, I thought so. I know it was Clemson. I, I know I was giving you... Um, I was giving you a hard time about it, but then, you know, you and uh, you, you and your crew, like all you guys look like y'all work out. And I mean, you had a sense of humor, but it looks like a, like your sense of humor only went like so far. So I didn't want to, you know, stare too much on talking about your, your football teams. I was like, yeah, man, Clemson shirts, pretty awesome. Would be a great shirt for a Georgia shirt instead, huh? <laughs> like that. But you guys didn't think it was funny. All right. <laughs> Next up is TL Wuss, uh, WSF says, where can I get my greens master sharpened? It's a good question. So if you are in, depends on where you are, but I think, let me see if I can find the, that, that tool that Real Rollers put together. Let me see, realrollers.com. And then if you go to realrollers.com, we'll do it live here. You go to their website. It's a pretty snazzy website with their video playing and everything. And then you go to Grinder Finder. So this is a utility they put together that that lists shops that will that that say they offer that say they offer um, sharpening services for real mowers. Now, um, I think pretty much um, they they send their submission. I think lead they they do like a like a you know a basic vetting of the of the place. Now, but keep in mind like that that you know real rollers hasn't. Um, personally had a real sharp mind of these people, so they don't know how well, you know, how well they do. Now, in the Atlanta area, I can tell you that I had, um, it wasn't Peachtree Mowers, it was Michael, this guy here, Atlanta Real Mower. Atlanta Real Mower, um, the guy's name is Michael. He does an excellent job. Like this, 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 if you're in the Georgia area, this is, um, is who I would call. Look at who these other guys are. There's also Real Works. Uh, Petri mower, but this guy, Atlanta, Atlanta, um, real mower sharpening and repair. He's a, uh, he's very, very good. Like he's the one that I, that I gave my Alet reel to. And it was the first time he'd never sharpened one of those before, right? There's not that one, there's not many of them, but it was, uh, he took it and was very, very careful with it. Did a great job, great job sharpening. He did a bunch of research on it and found out what, what, um, what kind of, um, what kind of shirt, what kind of grind this needs to be put on, on it. And it's an, did an awesome job. The mower cuts great. So I would give, if you're in the Atlanta area, I would give him a call. Uh, it also, another option too, is Jerry Pate company. So if you have a greens master, if you're on the South side, uh, call up uh, Jerry Pate company. They also do a great job sharpening uh, greens masters. I mean, that's their, that's their bread and butter. I mean, they're a Toro dealer. So if you have a greens master, if you need any, also any maintenance done, uh, Atlanta, Michael can do it too. Like Atlanta, um, real mower can do it as well too. But if you're, you know, some of your stickler and you want like only Toro parts and you know, you want like a Toro mechanic working on it for what that's worth. And again, if, 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 uh, if that's what your, your, your big thing is, then, um, Jerry Pate can do it. And then, um, Michael at Atlanta, real mower service and repair. Those are, the, those are two that I would personally, I would personally recommend for a greens master that are going to do a great job. Those, those, either one of those are going to, are going to be just fine. And, um, and if you need more work outside of us to sharpen, then maybe that leads you more towards Jerry Pate, but you're going to pay for it. You know what I mean? They're, they're not, <laughs> they're not cheap. They are proud of their, uh, of their labor. They're proud of their labor. All right. James uh, Kelly is waiting. He says it's yellow nuts edge. You think it's yellow nuts edge? You think so? It could be. I'm just looking at how broad the uh, the leaf is. It could be. It could be a sedge. If it is, Edwin, so if it is a sedge, so we've gotten, and I'm fine to be wrong. Um, if it is uh, nut sedge, yellow nut sedge, uh, then your your option for that is going to be this, going to be certainty. Like this is going to kill, you know, which sedge um, certainty is labeled for? It doesn't really say because it kills all of them. 
So it's, it's, it, that's, the, that's the beauty of, uh, of this product. If you have warm season grass, and it looks like you do have Bermuda. So yeah, so get some certainty and it will, um, it will knock, it will knock that back. Even if you have cool season, if that's cool season grass coming through, it'll kill that too. So uh, that would be my recommendation. Seems like everyone is thinking that it is a, it is a sedge of some sort. So this with surfactant should take care of it for you. All right, next up is a Harper's Knitter is up next. He says, I'm a cool season noob in Boise. Pre-immersion put down October 1st. It started raining at 11 p.m. after the last mo day. I got up and put put out more fur and pre-emergent. Fun. When do I put down my first pre-emergent for summer weeds? Okay, so I think you're pretty good on pre-emergent for the fall. Um, you, you probably don't need to do any more. Uh, so the, the the most correct answer, Harper's, is is in that when it comes to uh, your spring pre-emergent application, is you want to apply it before the average soil temperature is 55 degrees. So I have no idea in Boise, Idaho, when your soil temps get to 55 degrees, but I can tell you in Georgia, what, what I tend to do is in the in the month of February, right? So February timeframe is when I get my spring pre-emergent down. That is earlier than a lot of other people will tell you to do it, but I'm also, I also don't end up with having a bunch of weeds in my lawn in the summer months, like a lot of those people do. So. The, when it comes, the, the, the most correct answer is if you can look at when in your area, when, when the soil temperature average gets around 55 degrees, you want to get it down prior to that because at 55 degrees is when crabgrass can begin to germinate and other warm weather weeds will begin to germinate. So you want to get it done prior to that. So let's say in your area, because Boise, you're further north, let's say in mid-March, that's when, or say, say, we'll say the end of March. Say the end of March is when the soil temps in your area get to be on average 55 degrees. I would get your pre-emergent down in early March. I would get it, I would give yourself a good two, three, two to three week buffer um, prior to the soil, um, the, the, te the, the soil temperatures getting to that, that point to get it down because it's not going to hurt anything. And if you're a late if you're late, you're going to have weeds in your lawn during the summer months. And believe me when I tell you that it's a lot more expensive, like, you know, pre-emergent, a bag of pre-emergent, 65, 70 bucks thereabouts, uh, you know, delivered to your door. If you get the, um, if you get the, the water dispersal granule, it's like $30 for a five ounce. If you go up to like a, you know, a, the, the five pound jug, it'd be $150. I mean, it gets more expensive, but if you go out and you start buying like this stuff, like sell, well, you, you're in Boise, but if you start buying like, um, Tenacity and Sedgehammer and then all the surfactants and everything you need to go along with it, you can easily be, you know, in two, around 200 bucks in post-emergent herbicides that you could have avoided or had much less of a need for had you gotten your pre-emergent application down earlier. So given that you've already done your fall pre-emergent, it looks like twice, we're not going to put any more pre-emergent down until the springtime. And again, I've already given you the most correct answer as, far as I can as far as when to do it before, a couple of weeks before your soil temperatures, the average soil temps get to 55 degrees before that. And, and that's going to that's gonna do well as far as um, keeping weeds out of your lawn. As far as which pre-emergent to apply in the spring, you can use prodiamine, but uh, we can go here. I can, I can show you here really quick. Um, you can use this. You can use prodiamine. It's not a bad, not a bad option. And you know, there's people that only use prodiamine and have great results. But I'm a fan. If you're gonna if you're gonna do a pre-emergent in the springtime, I am more a fan of dithiopyr for your spring pre-emergent choice than prodiamine. The reason being is dithiopyr is a few dollars more. It's like you know three, four, five dollars more expensive than prodiamine. But dithiopyr has the ability to kill young crabgrass. So crabgrass that is just germinated, um, that is, you know, it's not fully mature. It, it has a bit of reach back to be able to, to, to injure and kill young crabgrass, whereas prodiamine does not. So for that reason, I feel that it's better suited as a spring pre-emergent um, option and prodiamine for a fall um, pre-emergent option. But I mean, again, e you can apply either one of them in the spring or the fall, but if you're trying to be as optimal or use the best tool for the job, then dithiopyr in the spring makes more sense to me than prodiamine. But again, either will work. The most important thing is get it down prior to soil temps reaching 55 degrees in the springtime. Hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. All right, Dwayne's World is up next. He says, Ron, 
If I missed it, I apologize. But do you sell Spectacle Flow at the Golf Course Lawn Store? I do not, I do not. It's a very, very expensive herbicide and most people, uh, I mean, most people aren't gonna aren't gonna aren't gonna spring for it. I could I could start carrying it. I mean, maybe we'll see if, if maybe next year I'll maybe I'll do, send out some surveys and, and and ask people if they really want me to carry it. But it's so expensive. I mean, it's, Spectacle Flow is north of um, north of three hundred bucks. I can see what it costs now. It's probably gone up, like most things. Yeah, it's like three hundred forty dollars. That's about the, that's the same price it was uh, a few months ago. So you know, is just just paying three hundred and forty dollars for for that seem expensive to you and keep in mind this will treat oh, i forgot i did the math on it but it's it's um this is an 18 ounce bottle it's an 18 ounce bottle and for um for warm for bermuda for for hybriding common bermuda if you apply this at the higher rate at the heavier rate you're going to be putting this down at two tenths or two tenths of an ounce so 0.2 ounces uh, over a thousand square feet. So you can do the math on that, right? That's a that's a bunch. Um, I forget off the top of my head how many acres this treats, but, it's, but this one bottle treats a lot. Like it'd be, it'd take care of your lawn, your friend's lawns, neighbor's lawns, it'd take care of your lawns, people you like's lawns, the people you don't like's lawns. You got, so for, for that reason, unless you've got people to split this with, unless you, like one, you, you know, you're a very, um, you're a very generous person and you just go out and you spray your neighbors and you help, you help people in your neighborhood out, um, or you have someone to split the cost with, it doesn't make a lot of sense for a person that has like a 5,000 square foot lawn to go out and buy an 18 ounce bottle of spectacle because you're just never gonna use it all. So if you, if you, and so for that reason is why I'm not super keen on uh, on carrying it. But as far as the best, or in my opinion, one of the best, I mean, Pennant Magnum is good too. There's also some other ones, but this is, um, this is as the bee's knees when it comes to keeping POA out of your, warm season out of your warm season grass and if you want to pick it up Dwayne and if you like supporting the channel I'll give you uh, a link to it here on Amazon uh, because the price is um, it's pretty much the same everywhere as uh, it's, it's, I think I'm pretty sure it's an agency price product so, uh, so there you go spectacle flow and and there you go it's great product but bring your wallet bring your wallet all right, next up is No Name. He says, hey, Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts. My lawn needs another cleanup cut thanks to the warm weather. Good, man. Get out there and do it. I, I mean, don't <laughs> believe if, if you're coming, if you're coming to me, if you're coming to me to say, hey, I'm I, I, I'm thinking about going on mowing my lawn, talk me out of it. Wrong, wrong channel, man. Wrong place. I am. I'm a I'm a terrible accountability partner when it comes to mowing your lawn less. I'm really bad for that. So uh, so, yeah, given that it's giving you that little bit of growth, a little splash of green. The lawn is begging for you to put a sharp mower on it. Don't, don't deny it. Don't deny your lawn that. Get out there and go get it done. All right, Ben Raham is up next. He says, do you keep up PGR apps before top dressing? I do, I do. It's not ideal. So here, here's why, Ben. Here's how I tend to do it. I started applying PGR to my lawn uh, in April. And just when I do my, my uh, late April is when I typically do my first application. Next year, I might play around with getting it by starting even a bit earlier. We'll see. I'm, I'm thinking about doing, about switching that up a little bit, maybe going a little bit earlier next year just to test it and see what kind of results I get. But be, but the thing with me is once I start applying growth regulator, once I start putting down uh, Primo on my lawn, I don't stop until September timeframe. So really every couple of weeks uh, um, from April through September throughout the entire growing season, the lawn is under regulation. Now, if you top dress your lawn while it's under regulation, it will take longer to grow through, but it will grow through. Like if you look at, my, my back lawn, it uh, like it was top dressed. It was heavily top dressed. I mean, not. I mean, because the, the, whenever Sam and Top Dressing came out to come do it, they top dressed at a much heavier rate than even I would normally do, and it still grew through it. Right, even under regulation, it just took a bit longer. So to answer your question, yes. Uh, so if you if you're planning to say do your top dressing in late April, right? You could, if you wanted the lawn to go through or to recover as quickly as possible, what you could do is you could not do any growth regulator, do your top dressing in late April, early May. Once the grass grows through, start using your PGR and then just keep using it, you know, until the end of the growing season. That's completely a strategy that that's absolutely fine. I just start, once I just start using it, I don't, I don't stop. So when I did the front lawn, it was, uh, when I top dressed it, it was under regulation. And when I top dressed the back lawn or when I paid to have the back lawn top dress, it was also under regulation and the lawn grows through. It just, it's not like the grass doesn't grow anymore. It just grows a lot slower. 
And if you top dress the way that I recommend doing it, uh, it which is to go light, you know, between a quarter to half an inch of material, the as far as the lawn recovering, it's gonna, it's not gonna be too bad at all, even even with it being um, under under a growth regulation. So something to keep in mind, but it but it, it is going to go slower as far as recovering uh, if you uh, if you top dress it when it's under PGR than if you don't. All right, no name is up next. He says, I see you are so close to 50,000 subscribers. Let's get those likes up. Yeah, man, 50K, almost there. I think, what am I, I have no idea. How many subscribers do I have? I don't know, I can check. It is 49,520 is what I'm at right now. So we'll see. So I would need 500 more to get to 50K. That'd be pretty cool before the end of the year. I don't know, it's only six weeks. Might be might be asking a lot given the time of year, so we'll uh, we'll see. It'd be it'd be cool. It'd be cool to to, to crack fifty k. I mean, it's just a dumber, right? It'd be cool to crack fifty k, but I guess as long as I keep going, keep making content, keep providing value, it'll eventually happen. If not this year, next year, right? So uh, so yeah, but this it's a big accomplishment. Uh, no name. I, I I will tell you that when I started the channel, the, if you told me that at one point I would have like ten thousand subscribers, subscribers, I tell you there's no way, much less fifty thousand. And uh, I would tell you, I would have never believed it. So, you know, just to keep being consistent, keep working at, at it, keep grinding, and it uh, it just happens, right? It happens. All right, LT Sullivan is saying, you gotta dig up that cat, that Dallas grass or burn it or burn it out uh, to kill it or it's coming back facts with a vengeance. Absolutely right, LT. So exactly what he said is, is right. There's not really a herbicide that you are supposed to spray that is labeled for use on residential lawns to kill Dallas grass. So your best bet is just to remove it. Just get you know, a weed removal tool, carve out a couple of evenings and, and you know, an hour, a couple, a couple of evenings and just, and just remove it. And it's, it's not that bad. And uh, that's, that's going to be your best way to, to get, to get rid of it and to keep it gone. Any of the herbicides that are labeled for residential use that have Dallas grass in the label, they will say like suppression or will injure it. Like even like certainty, if you look at the label for certainty, it has Dallas grass on there, but it, it says it will injure it or suppression or, you know, it'll, it'll knock it back a little bit. But as far as killing it, like controlling it, making it not come back, um, no, there's nothing really that, that, again, that you're supposed to spray on residential lawns that will do that, unfortunately. All right, next up is Mr. Tim Jackson. And guys, we're at 8.30, so actually what we're gonna do here in a little bit is we're gonna do the drawing for the hat. So I promised you guys, I'm a man of my word. We're gonna, I said I would do it. We're gonna do it at 8.30 and we're getting close here. So I'm gonna do Jim, Tim's comment and then we're gonna do the drawing for the hat, for the one of one hat. And I don't see LG in the chat. I'm not sure what's going on, why he's not. He might be just lurking. Surprised LG's not hanging around. I know he commented. All right, Tim Jackson says, down here in San Antonio, still fully green, even though I shut down fertilizer after October 1st, Bermuda mites got me. Uh, it took me a while to figure out. Three treatments in, in a row now of abamectin. Uh, one to go, looks good. Nice, Tim. Glad, at least you got it figured out. Glad that you uh, that you you got them, you got them under control. And then October 1st, uh, yeah, I mean, San Antonio, if you guys haven't had the cold snap that we had here in Georgia, I'm not, I'm not surprised that you that your lawn is still is still green. Remember, our, this year, unlike last year, like last year, our lawns stayed green a lot longer than they should have. This year, they checked out a lot earlier than they should have because of that that cold snap that came through, and really, uh, you know, really slowed down, um, really, really just slowed down growth. And then that coupled with no rainfall, the lawn was like, "See ya, I'm out, deuces. Catch you guys in the spring." So that's how that happened. All right, guys, so it is time. It is time to now give away the hat. So the way this is gonna work is there is a, the if you commented on last week's live stream, we'll go over here to share the screen. This is the video for that. Let me just make sure I'm putting the right one in here so you guys can check me and make sure this doesn't make any noise. And yeah, fall dormancy is here. And it was the one from last week. And you can see some of the comments, lawn domination. I intend to dominate my lawn next spring. I intend to dominate. So these are all the comments. These are people that are all being entered. Now guys, here's the thing. You got to be present to win. So if you're not here, if you're not here, I'm gonna have to draw again until someone is, um, until someone's present because you gotta be here to win it. All right, but that same URL is the one that's here. So now, we will fetch, let's see the number of people we got here. We'll fetch the number of comments. And we have currently 30 people, 30 people that are in 
to win the one of one Ron Henry hat. All right, so if I pick a winner, we come up with Animus Auditor 1A. Animus Auditor 1A, would you please come to the DJ booth? Please come to the DJ booth to claim your prize. I saw you in here earlier. So if you're here, uh, just you know, chat or say something in the in the bottom of the chat window. I'll just keep looking here for you. And uh, you have won a hat. He says, dominated this year with a true cut Toro Greens Master 3250D. We'll be here in two weeks. And you can, I mean, I, again, I wouldn't recommend that you necessarily mow with this, but if you want to pose with it, take a picture of your new Toro with the hat, that would be pretty sweet. So NMS Auditor 1A, if you're here, if you're still around, uh, put your, uh, you know, say something in the chat and um, I will get the hat out to you. I will get the hat out to you. What you, what you need to do in order for me to know where to ship it is you will have to send me your mailing address here, which is ron at golfcourselawn.com. If you send me your mailing address, I will make sure that this gets out to you. But I got I to gotta see you in the comments here. Say, yeah, I'm here. I want it or something like that. So make sure you just say something here. We'll, we'll give you a few minutes and um, we'll continue answering questions. Because if, if he came in and then left, then... We have to do it again. We have to do it again. <laughs> John Williams is already like, looks like he's here. Pick another. We're gonna give him five minutes, guys. Okay, so it's uh, it's it's eight thirty-seven right now. We'll give him till quarter of the hour. Okay, so we'll say till uh, eight forty-five. And if he doesn't comment in, then we will pick another. But I know he was here earlier. I don't know why why he uh, why he left. I guess he had something to do. All right, so don't up. Oh, he's here. Here, here. Okay, he's here. He's here. He won. I, I just saw him just pop in. I just saw he popped in. I'm sorry, guys. He's here. He's here. I'm here. Okay, here and present. So congrats, NMS Auditor. Here's the hat. And if you order, if you guys have ordered from me here recently, I um I will I typically do a um you guys will get this along with some orders. If you order Primo, my wrong wrong camera, you order Primo or some of the stuff that I pack myself. Uh, there's the sticker. So I'll also throw this in as well. You know what we'll do. If you guys want, we'll do a couple of stickers as well. Why not, right? We can do a couple of stickers as well. I've got one of my, um, one of my, this is actually vintage. You can't even get this one anymore. So I printed these up. This is like one of the last ones that I had. I was writing someone's name on it and I, I my handwriting was terrible. So I didn't want to send it out. So I've got one golf course lawn store sticker left and then these which is the current the current ones so we'll do we'll do we'll draw for two more how about that we'll send we'll send two we'll do two more drawings just to make sure consolation so nms otter you're already out you're gonna get the, the hat and a sticker along with it and we'll do a sticker for two more lucky winners so let's go back to the tool we'll go back to the random comment picker here let's see here all right so the next winner is Mary J. All right, Mary J. I know you're here because you just you just uh, pinged in, so you will win. Um, it says you're dominating the neighborhood, so congrats. You just uh, you just won a the limited edition sticker. This guy right here, that one right there. If I get to focus, that so this will come out to you. So I need to make sure I keep them in order, Mary J. And then we'll pick one more for. This sticker right here. So we have the golf course lawn store sticker. This is nice and small. Guys, this sticker is one of my favorite stickers. The height of it, it's, it's, it's smaller. And this guy works great on your spreaders, on your mower. It's not too bad. I had some stickers in the past that are really big. This guy's good. It fits on the handle. It goes in a lot of different places. So the winner for this guy, we're going to go back to our random comment picker. The winner for the golf course lawn sticker is LG. LG, are you present? I don't think he's here, guys. It might not be LG because he did not. I, I know he's um he's he was supposed to come in this week, but I haven't seen him. I don't know what's going on. So we'll give we'll give this guy uh five minutes. We'll give it till the till 845 and We'll draw again for the other sticker. Now, another way to get one of these, if you want one, is if you order uh, Primo Max, it comes with one of these stickers. You order Primo Max or Certainty or um, Celsius, you order like any of the, the herbicides that are in the kits, I'll show you, I'll show you which ones it comes with. So if you were go here, if you order any of the cool season, the cool season kit, the warm season kit, 
or any of these, so anything on the top shelf, any of these guys here. So one, two, these, these top eight items in the herbicide section, it comes with one of these stickers. Just another way to get one as well. Or you can wait five minutes and you may have a chance to win one for free. All right. So in five minutes, LG, you got five minutes or someone else is going to win. And so Mary and NMS Auditor, if you guys don't mind, send me an email with your mailing address, ron at golfcourselon.com, and I will get these out to you guys tomorrow. I'll get them in the mail to you guys tomorrow. We got one more. We want one more here to go. And LG's not present, so someone else might be, might be getting it. All right, our next comment... Man, the comment section, you guys, oh, it's LG, 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 I'll show you. It was, uh, it was not LT, it was LG. It was this guy right there, LG. That's who it was, not, not LT. I want to make sure I'm not, not, uh, make sure I'm, I'm saying it correctly. All right, so let's go back to our next comment before I, uh, I awaken the tribe. You know, just free stuff and stickers. You guys got, got all excited. All right, next up is uh, Reese Morton. He says, been doing split pre-emergent treatments, half-rate granular and spray for the past two years. Definitely recommend. Thanks for chiming in, Reese. That's definitely an option for sure. I mean, there's, there's people that do split apps and they swear by it. It's the only way they would do their, their uh, pre-emergent apps. I don't do that. I, just, I tend to just do one application at a heavier rate. And as long as I get it down early, again, prior to the weed showing up, I, I tend to get pretty good results. But I, I totally can see the merits of doing a split app as well, for sure. All right, Jay Brooks is up next. He says, what's the best method to identify common Bermuda that's infiltrated my hybrid this year with the intent of removing it once we reach full dormancy state this fall so I don't hurt the hybrid? Okay, so Jay Brooks, I don't know. So as far as being able to determine which type of common you have, you're going to have to, you can take pictures of it and send it to your local extension office or maybe mail the, send the sample to them. Call yourself your local extension office and they'll be able to tell you. Maybe they can, the picture they might be able to do it, but they're probably going to have you actually send them the sample. But here's the thing. There's not really a herbicide that I'm aware of anyway, and I've been looking, that, that will selectively remove common Bermuda from a hybrid Bermuda lawn. In other words, there's not like, there's not like a, um, they say like Celsius, right? Like this will kill spurge in a Bermuda lawn. Like if you spray, if you have spurge in your Bermuda lawn, you, sp you spray this, it'll kill the spurge, won't kill your Bermuda. There's not really a herbicide that I'm, that I'm aware of that will selectively remove common Bermuda that won't also kill the hybrid Bermuda as well. So if you find one, definitely let me know because there's a lot of people that are looking for it, but I don't, I don't know when that will, uh, that, that will, that will do that. So I'm not sure if you're, if you're saying, if, if what you're, if, if the common, if the, the, the Bermuda you want to remove is in like one area, so it's not like, it's not mixed in, it's not mingled in with your hybrid. What you can do is you can use 41% uh, glyphosate and fusillade, like that combination, glyphosate and fusillade, 41% glyphosate um, and fusillade, um, that is non-selective and that's very good for killing Bermuda grass. If you want to, and again, I would only do that if you have it in just a specific area. So if you have like, let's say this MySoil test kit is your entire lawn and this is all hybrid Bermuda and just the MySoil logo is common Bermuda, like this entire logo is just common Bermuda. In that case, you could spray that with a, a non-selective herbicide combination like uh, glyphosate and fusillade. But you don't want to blanket your entire lawn with it because it's going to nuke the uh, the hybrid too. But um, but yeah, but as far as being able to selectively remove hybrid or remove common out of hybrid, I don't know of a um, of a way to of a selective herbicide to do that. There's ways to do it. Again, if they're all in clumps all by themselves, um, but if there's any hybrid mix in there, it's also going to get injured or, or or killed as well too. So just something to keep in mind. All right, guys. So we are we're at eight forty five. Good Lord, the chat's going crazy. You guys behave. You guys are just terrible. Goodness gracious. All right, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to the comment picker. And uh, LG is not here. So we're going to pick another person for Golf Force Lawn Sticker. So LG's not here. We're going to close this out. And next up, our next winner is Robert Majuros. Robert, are you still present? I know you were here earlier. Robert you have your your winner of a brand new, never used, not even written on it or anything like that. Nothing, it's just not not in, in any way um, messed with at all. Golf course lawn sticker. So if you're still present, I know you were here earlier. This one has got your name on it. 
Got to be present to win, though. So if you came in earlier, you just said, hey, Ron, just came to say hi, and then you left, I'm going to have to draw again. So we're going to give you till 8.55. So you got nine minutes, and if nine minutes you don't pop in and say, hey, I'm here, then I'm going to draw, pick someone else. So, so far, we got NMS Auditor. We got, and I need to make a note of this. So NMS Auditor, and then Mary J. Making notes of who won what. And then Robert for this. <laughs> John Williams. John Williams is like, man, can I buy a win? Uh, yeah, I mean, you never know. Just stick around, John. It could happen. It could happen. I hope that helps. Uh, um, Jay Brooks, if you need anything else, uh, let me let me know. You're very, very welcome, Blaine. All right, next up is Isaac Mompomparos. He says, been a great growing season for me. I did a heavy scalp in mid-September and then proceeded with a heavy nitrogen blitz. That mixed with a couple of good rainstorms and a lot of sunny days, Kentucky bluegrass and perennial ryegrass. I bet it's looking nice, Isaac. You, you, all you cool season guys are, are, are probably looking solid uh, this time of year. This is your, your, your go time, right? So yeah, glad to hear Shalon's doing well. All right, next up is Sean Scott. He says, good evening, Ron. I have overseeded my yard with fine fescue and annual ryegrass. I live in Virginia. Is there a pre-emergent I can use now or should I wait till next year? Thanks, my friend. So if your goal is to keep and not injure the fine fescue and uh, an annual rye, then no, I wouldn't apply pre-emergent. So warm season grass or Bermuda, to be more, more precise, is fairly tolerant of being of having pre-emergent applied to it when it's relatively young. So within, in most cases, if, if, if uh, Bermuda lawn has been installed like three months later, I, like for me, I don't have a problem with putting pre-emergent on it. With a war with cool season grass, you really want to give it, I mean, conventional wisdom says you really want to give it a year. If you wanted to, to give it to, to uh, you know, do a light app in the spring, you could, but really, um, can the regular guide, the conventional guidance says to wait a year. So really it would be this time next year is when you would apply pre-emergent if your goal is to not to do anything that could injure your now, your newly overseeded fine fescue and annual ryegrass lawn. So yeah, for this fall, definitely no. In the spring, a light app perhaps, you're kind of, it's really your call, but really you want to wait until this time next year or till, till um, September-ish, August, September, August time next year before you introduce any kind of uh, pre-emergence. So what that means is once the lawn is established, it'll just be spot spraying uh, for herbicides, spot, spot spraying weeds. So if you have, you know, any, any weeds that do pop in, you can just spot spray with something like Tenacity. Um, and again, we have the, the, the new, the, the revamped version of it here in the store. Like if you order it from us, this is what you'll get. The one that has, I'll show you here real quick. The one that has the measuring cup built into it. So, so there, so there you go. But yeah, no pre-emergent. I wouldn't, uh, this time of year. I really, really wouldn't. Not for your, not for given that you just seeded the lawn. Isaac says, I wish I took picks. Now I, I, I wish I took some before picks. I have some good after picks though. Well, yeah, that's cool, man. If you want Next week, send them, um, you know, send them in to me and we can, you can show them off. We'll give it another week or so. It'll be even more awesome. Send the pictures and we'll definitely show them off because, you know, people like to see nice looking lawns this time of year because all of our lawns, our warm season lawns don't look that great. So if you got any cool pictures, actually, if you, if you send them now, I might be able to get it in tonight, um, Isaac. So again, Ron at Golf Course Lawn is where you would send it. And if you get a picture over to me here in the next few minutes, I, I might be able to make, get it on the show tonight so people can check it out. All right, next up is John Williams. John Williams, AKA, can I buy a win? He says, hey, thanks for the show. Uh, who won the hat? Um, so, NMS Otter won the hat so far, and Mary won this sticker. However, there's another sticker up for grabs. There's another one up for grabs. This one right here. This one here. And you know what I need to do is, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna make up I'm gonna make up some, kind of have like some of the limited edition hats. I'm gonna make up some stickers just for the live stream, just for doing giveaways in the live stream. I think I'm gonna start doing that because you guys seem to really like it and it's fun, right? Something fun to do while we're out here talking about grass and killing weeds and all that fun stuff as well. All right, James Kelly says, that's what I'm drinking right now and I still call it an Arnold Palmer. Yep, so yeah, lemonade and iced tea is still Arnold Palmer. I, I agree with you on that one. John Williams says, Ron, can you talk about goose, goose grass a little? Does this stuff die in the winter? I miss the prodiamine um, water dispersible granule. 
um, uh, answer on if this will stop goosegrass from growing. I can't stand goosegrass, it must die. Yes, so it will, um, we just, we did this, we did the check of this already. Uh, it is on the label. It is on the label. Um, make sure I'm not lying to you here. We did, we did check, uh, we did check the label. Prodiamine will prevent or will suppress goosegrass, but, uh, it, you know, per, I'm not sure if you were on earlier, but it, um, the, the, the label for it calls for doing a split application. So actually I can, we can do it again. I can show you again, right? We can do that. We can do that, right? Let me find, where did I have that? Uh, this tab. I am a tabaholic. I'm really bad. If you guys saw my browser tab, you guys would, would laugh at me. I'm, I ha I'm terrible about like, like it's not uncommon for me to have like 50 tabs open on a single browser window. I'm really bad about tabs. I don't like to close stuff. I don't like to, I, I, I think I'll need it. I'll come back to it later, right? Anyway, so as far as goosegrass for prodiamine, so prodiamine, the dispersal granule, the guidance calls for um, the an application rate of one to 2.3 pounds per acre. So just do the math on that. So if we, I can do it real quicker for you. So if you take, um, let me see, 2.3 and divide that by 45. So, um, or sorry, by 43, I said 45, 43. Uh, so just just uh, just over half, uh, 0.05 um, ounce, just, point, just over point, um, let, me think about, let me think about this. Let me make sure I'm, I'm telling you right here. Um, let me do the conversion. So just over 0 0.05 pounds, but let me, let's, let's take uh, 2.3, and we'll convert that to ounces first. So we'll take 36.8. Um, so the answer I was gonna give you was gonna be in pounds. So 36.8 and we'll divide that by 43. So 0.85. So it shows, so, so the, the annual rate for, for prodiamine, um, John, is 0.83 pounds, 0.83 ounces. Uh, per thousand square feet. So they are they're recommending a rate that's a little bit or the high side is about that. So pretty much are recommending max rate for goosegrass and that for best results you want to do a um, a split application, right? So this 2.3 pounds works out to right around point to point eight five ounces thereabouts um, per thousand square feet approximately. So that's, it's about max rate because the max rate for prodiamine is 0.83 uh, for Bermuda. So, uh, so there you go. So yeah, doing a split up of that should, should get you, should take care of it for you as far as keeping it out of, um, out of your lawn. And I want to say, was, was certainty labeled for, it's either, it's for one of them. It, I want to say if certainty is labeled as a post-emergent for killing it, assuming that you have any in your lawn. Give me one sec here and I will tell you, I want to say it was, let's see. Um, it was one of the G grasses. If it's not goose grass, which one was it? It was not goose grass, not Virginia buttonweed. There's another, there's another one I'm thinking of, of here that no, it was John, it was Johnson grass what I was thinking about. Yeah. So not, yeah, not, so, so, so it, so no, so, so as far as keeping it out of your lawn, prodiamine will work. Um, but Johnson grass, I was thinking about Johnson grass and quack grass. So, all right. So hope that helps John. We still have a few more minutes, one more minute before we do the drawing for the next, let me see here. Did he come in? No, he didn't. Robert's not here either. And we are at, uh, five, up five of the hour. So we're going to go back to the drawing again. All right. No one wants to get this sticker. Okay, again, for the sticker, we're gonna clear Robert away. We're gonna pick another winner. James Dean, James Dean. James, if you are present, please come to the DJ booth. I didn't remember seeing James comment tonight, so I don't think James is here either, guys. We're probably gonna be doing this again. We're gonna be up here till like 10 o'clock trying to give this sticker away. <laughs> James, you got, we're gonna give you uh, like 10 minutes. We're gonna give you till, um, just, just past after nine o'clock. You've just passed the nine o'clock to uh, to come in and say, I'm here. If not, we're gonna draw someone else. That's what I get for doing three stickers. I should've just done like one thing and I did, said three now. Now we gotta keep drawing, right? Uh, just hang out and hang in here, guys. You still got a shot. You still got a shot to win. All right, next up is 
uh, McNasty Motorsports. He says, hey, Ron, experimenting with perennial ryegrass overseed this year, so no pre-emergent down. Backing up to a green belt jungle <laughs> definitely has brought some green, some weed pressure. Recommend Recommendations for a perennial ryegrass safe post-emergent. Yeah, uh, tenacity. So what I would say is go with this McNasty. Uh, yeah, Tenacity is a good option. Um, we carry it in the store. I'll actually put, uh, I'll, I'll actually show it to you here and I'll, then I'll send you some links for some stuff you want to get along with it. So for your perennial, now if you're, <laughs> if you're, if uh, this is safe for your, for your ryegrass, it is not safe for whatever you overseeded for your Bermuda. So you really, um, I would not blanket the lawn with this stuff. So if you're gonna, if you, if, you, if your Bermuda is checking out, starting to go dormant, and you want, you're going to be just be spot spraying for weeds, you could get away with this. But if you're going to be blanketing the entire lawn, um, which really is not recommended, even the label doesn't really doesn't say that's a great idea, then um, we may have to use something else. So a couple of options, you can go with Tenacity. There's also um, the the Triad Select. That is uh, safe for, for ryegrass, but Tenacity, is, out of the two, this is more effective. If you're going to go with this with Tenacity, use surfactant with it. Actually, if you're going to use either one of these, use surfactant with it. So Tenacity with a, with a surfactant or the Broadleaf with a surfactant. To make it easier for you, what I will do is I will send um, a link to this page for you in the chat uh, at McNasty Motorsports. And there you go. So you can it's your choice, um, Tenacity and a surfactant or try to select and a surfactant. Um, and good to go. Of the two, uh, this is probably a better choice, or we're gonna be, or be more effective of the two, right? Tenacity will. So hope that helps, sir. All right. Next up is Cameron Wright. He says, "I recently renovated 1,500 square feet of annual bluegrass, or of bluegrass and rye. Annual bluegrass, or just bluegrass and rye. So I guess Kentucky bluegrass is what you did." If I choose to level with soil and sand mix in the spring, will it break my pre-emergent barrier for my first application? No, not it shouldn't. It shouldn't. That shouldn't be a problem uh, at all. I've never. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, Cameron. Here's here is here's what my program is normally like. What I end up doing. Okay, I normally apply pre-emergent early, so February time frame is when I get my spring pre-emergent down. That's when I apply it, and I will aerate at least once. Um, after that. So it'll be in April time frame, I'll either aerate the lawn, or if I top dress, I aerate as a long as, as a part of the top dressing process, right? Which is way worse than just top dressing. And I don't get a ton of weed pressure from doing that. And that's that's a fairly aggressive thing to do to your lawn, um, to, to as far as as far as um, activities that are detrimental to, to getting the most out of your pre-emergent. If all you're doing is just top dressing, meaning all you're going to be doing is just spread, spreading that sand soil blend on your, on your soil, on your lawn and working it in with a, uh, with a leveling rake, you're going to be just fine. There's not going to be, I, I wouldn't expect to see any, any problems um, as far as it negatively affecting your pre-emergent barrier. Should be good to go. Should not be a problem at all, sir. Definitely, and here's the thing I tell you, you didn't ask this, but take pictures. Take pictures before you top dress and after you top dress because otherwise you're gonna be like, you know, Isaac or, or one of the other guys that did all these, do these renovations and then you're not gonna have them before. So the well, the cool, the best part about doing before and after pics is having the before to go with the after. Isaac is saying, I don't think it's nuts edge. Yeah, I agree with you, Isaac. I don't think it's nuts edge either, but you know, I, again, I'm, I'm fine to be wrong. To me, the leaf, if you look at some of the longer ones, the leaf looks really wide and looks almost like an annual ryegrass to me. It doesn't look like a sedge, but I could could be wrong on that. It looks like it looks like a like a to annual ryegrass to me instead of um nut sedge, but a lot of people think it's nut sedge. All right. Um let's see. Next up we have let's see here. I have a, I think I have a picture here. Maybe a picture to show you guys. Oh, cool! Cool picture from um, from Ryan from Ryan McFarland. Show you guys. He's got his little his little uh, fall project going on where he is growing perennial ryegrass uh, on the bottom and fescue on top. So you guys want to see the differences as far as germination times as far as a ryegrass and fescue. Take a look at this. This is pretty cool. So if you see how quickly the ryegrass is popping in and growing in. 
and then the fescue is taking its time. And that's 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 what I saw. That's what I saw whenever I did my little planters last year. Uh, ryegrass is very, very easy to grow. It doesn't take very much to get ryegrass to germinate. And Ryan is seeing the same thing. Ryan is seeing the same thing. All right, so we have a super chat here from John Williams. Thank you so much, John. Let me go and take that real, real quick. Super chat for CFB. He says, much thanks, Ron. Great show. Hit the like button. Do you think when I pull weeds and leave a little root in the soil, it will come back or should I spray? It, there's a chance it'll come back, but it's, I mean, just get, give it time. I mean, and you'll, and you'll see, but it's, uh, it, I mean, it depends. If there's any, if there's roots left, can it grow back? Yes. Um, but if you've pulled it, if you've already pulled it, I wouldn't go and then spray on top of that. So if you, if you're, if your goal to get rid of the weed is to use herbicide, I would spray the leaf of the herbicide, let it be taken up and work its way through the plant and kill it that way. If you're going to pull it, then just pull it and just wait and see. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, in other words, I wouldn't pull the weed and then go spray at the area where the weed used to be. If there's just in case there's any kind of roots uh, still left there, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I would not do that. Thank you so much for the super chat, uh, John. And it's time. Uh, I don't think he popped in as far as uh, James Ean to claim. So we are going to go back to the random, the random um, comment selector. All right. So we're back here. So James was in here. Our next winner, our next potential person to win the sticker, the sticker that just doesn't want to leave the channel apparently is. Heat, uh, hit, hit, uh, Matumbo, are you here? Are you present? I didn't see him tonight, guys. I think we're going to be drawing again. But Hitambo, you got five minutes. I'm going to start shortening these down. You got to be here. Me, you five minutes. Five minutes to show up or we're drawing again. Drawing again. So, uh, Hitambo, that's, that's who you're, I'll show you one, I'll show you one more time. If you are here, if you're present, please, uh, say I am here so that you can, I can get this sticker out to you tomorrow morning, sir. If you do not mind. All right. Let's see what we have up next. We got Sandria up next. He is, actually I gotta go back to um, to my other, to scroll back up. But Sandria, while I'm here, he says, I live in, he says, hi Ron, I live in Cole, Michigan. When should I apply fertilizer and weed killer? Is it too late now? Uh, so is it too late to apply fertilizer and weed killer? It, it, it depends on Sandria. If it's, if you are already getting snow on the ground or it's getting close to that, I wouldn't. If your if your grass is still actively growing, meaning you're still out there mowing it a couple times a week, and there's not you know like a hard freeze in sight or anything like that, uh, then yeah, if you want to continue to feed it, by all means, by all means. As far as um, weed killer, as far as herbicide, you can use that. You can do that as well. Um, but bear in mind that herbicide does not. It, it tends to work slower. If you're using post emergent herbicide anyway, it tends to work slower as as it gets cooler. So it's um, th th like most things in life, the best, the most correct answer is it depends. If it's, if in Michigan right now, there's not snow on the ground and their grass is still actively growing, meaning you're still out there mowing it a couple times a week, then yes, you can continue to feed it. If you have weeds in your lawn, um, and again, there's no sign of, um, of, of snow or anything like that anytime soon, and you want to, you want to take care of the weeds, you can, you feel free to do that as well as well too. So the answer to both to both your questions is it depends. But um but if if the scenario is you don't have um you don't have snow and the grass is still growing, then yes, you can still feed it and you can still use herbicides. You still can use herbicides. All right. Uh, so we have a question here or a comment here from Harper's Knitter says my son is a soil expert and runs a company. He cares for PJ and MLB fields. Very cool. He says, if you're a, a San Francisco Giants fan, that's his field. Nice. Do you think he will help me? I would hope so if he's your son. I mean, you brought him into this world. Shoot. I mean, the least he could do is help you with your lawn, right? He says, how do I send in a pic of a terrifying weed? Well, you can send the picture to ron at golfcourselawn.com. Um, but it sounds like you've got an actual, like you got someone that works in the industry that does nothing but take care of professional turf at your disposal. You know, I would I definitely send me the picture. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what I think, but he absolutely should be able to help you out as, uh, as well. Absolutely should be able to help you out as well. Um, so let's see here. So we got, so, the, so, um, Isaac sent this picture in of his rye, of his ryegrass lawn to show off and, oh, that does look good. 
That does look good. We got to show that. We got to show that. So Isaac, thank you so much for the picture, sir. This is a picture of what his lawn is currently looking like. Let me get the comment off of here. Stripe action is looking pretty clean, man. Looking good. Color looks great. Very nice. Very, very nice. I like it, man. Very, very nice. Lawn looks awesome. Great, great job, sir. Great job. All right, next up is Jim Carson, and we're going to give it uh, two more minutes, and we're going to draw again, because I don't see... Oh, actually, no, he's here. He's here. Hitombo is here. Thank goodness, man. Lord, I'm tired. We have to do it again. Okay, so Hitombo, if you're here, which I think you are, you are the winner of sticker number Trace. This guy right here, if I can get it to focus, your very own Golf Course Lawn Store sticker. If you don't mind, sir, send me a, an email with your mailing address. Where you get, where you want me to send it to? So Ron at GolfCourseLawn.com. Send me an email, and I'll send you your sticker. And I'm gonna make a, a note of your name. Hit, uh, hit me. Tombo. Okay, cool. Well, guys, we're going to have to do more of this. I, I I forgot how much fun it was to do the giveaway, so I'm going to have to get some custom stickers made up, and we'll have to just make a, make a thing out of it, especially this time of year when there's not a whole lot going on, right? Yeah, we'll have to, make, uh, we'll have to do that. All right. So next is a, our question is from Mr. Jim Carson, where he, has, he says, I have Bermuda doing good in the back. Question, how do I keep common Bermuda out of my tall fescue? Okay, so... So if you've got fescue, and if it's only fescue, you can use, um, let me see if, if Fusilade, I think Fusilade you can do, will do that. Let me check the label here really quick for you, um, Jim. But if I'm understanding your question correctly, you have a Bermuda lawn just in the back, and that's just Bermuda. You have another area of your lawn that is tall fescue. It's all tall fescue, and you have Bermuda that's trying to get into it. If that is what you're saying, then I believe Fusilade 2 will do it. I know it's labeled for, for removing um, Bermuda in zoysia grass. And it is, yes, it is also labeled for fescue as well. I, th I thought so. But I just wanted to check the label because if you spray herbicides on the wrong grass type, it results in a big ouchie. And I don't want you being all mad at me for saying, Ron, you told me to spray this on my lawn. My lawn's all dead now. It stinks. So I'll show you really quick here. This is the uh, the Fusilade 2 label. So uh, for removing common and hybrid Bermuda in zoysia, fine fescue, and tall fescue turf grasses on golf courses and residential lawns. So yeah, so be sure to read the label for this product. I will, um, I'll put a link to it here in the chat for you, Jim. Um, when you get it, be sure to please, 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 please promise me you're going to read the label because um, the there are there's there's specific guidance on if you are um, if you're spraying it, if you're spot spraying it, or if you're blanket spraying. So just make sure you read uh, you read the label. I'm going to put I'm going to put that here in the chat for you here in one sec. Give me a second here, and I'm going to get the link for you. There we go. All right, so this is at Jim Carson, and that is Fusilade 2. That, uh, that, again, is only for your tall fescue lawn where you are trying to remove Bermuda. Do not spray that on your Bermuda lawn in the back because it will the Bermuda lawn in the back that's doing good, it will not be doing good anymore if you spray Fusilade on it. So don't, you know, make sure you're only putting it on the cool season uh, turf where you're trying to, or right, on the fescue lawn, because it's not all cool season turf, on the fescue lawn where you're trying to remove common Bermuda. So let me know if I can help with anything else, sir. It's a really good herbicide. So that, that will do the trick for you. Rob's Blazer says, thanks for your advice last week. I do cut twice a week and just got to keep cutting. Very nice, uh, Rob. Mowing is one of the most important things you can do for an amazing lawn. So the more you mow, the better your lawn's going to grow. So keep it up. Keep it up. All right, so I'm looking for the next comment here. I got to scroll through the chat because there's a whole lot of uh, everyone posting, no, pick me and you should do this. Uh, let's see. Um, Jim Carson says, Ron, you should do the rubber duck race for a random picker. Very fun and interactive. I'll have to look into that because I need something that will use the YouTube comments because otherwise I got to, like in the past, what I used to do 
is I'd say I'd go through the when the channel is a lot smaller, I would go through and say who wants to be joined, be entered for it. Put your name in. I would sit there and I would literally type everyone's name in and then use like a random number generator and pick the number. And it's a pain to do that. So what I tend to do now with the giveaways is just they're always one week removed. So you just have to put your comment into the video at the end, which kind of gives you incentive to comment and be in to interact with the content. Um, and then I will use a random tool for that. So I'll look and see. I'll look and see if there's a rubber duck race co option for YouTube comments. Uh, let me take a screenshot of that so I'll, I'll remember it. Because that's a, uh, that's uh, it's pretty, it's a good, good idea. Makes it more fun. Makes it more fun than just kind of just, just hitting it, uh, hitting a button and someone's name popping out. Well, guys, let me see who else. We, what else we got here? And it says uh, two trill says, "Holy, LG isn't here, and he won. We will never hear the end of this." That's right. So you guys saw, and it's good. This isn't this live stream will stay up. So him always complaining about not winning is his own fault. Now, did he win the hat? No. And here's the thing: if LG were here, he'd still be complaining about not winning the hat. However, he did win one of the stickers, and watch, wasn't here. So, so there you go. So there you go. And Jay Brooks says, I intend to dig the common out. Okay. That's, that's an option that, uh, that will, that, that can work. Uh, I mean, it can work. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it, it's, it, you're, you're, you're going to be injuring the common and giving the hybrid a chance to fill in, but it's not, it's not really, it's not likely to get rid of, um, of the common. You can try it though. But, uh, but yeah, just, just, I don't want you to get your hopes up too high thinking that's going to absolutely, uh, take care of the um, of the problem. <laughs> I just says, oh, he's gonna flip when he finds out he won. He's not here. Someone call him. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Maybe he's work or busy doing something else. You know. All right, and uh, you're very very welcome, Jay Brooks. G G Free's in the house saying, hey, Ron Stripe Action Gang, thanks for coming to hang out, G Free. I appreciate you. All right, so we've got a next comment here, a question from LT Solomon. It says, so Ron, I have some disease X. Can I still throw it down for brown patch that I have that I get every season or do I need to wait to do it? Uh, you can. So um, if you're trying to for brown patch, you if you have it now, which I, I guess you could, but it's not, not typically the time of year when you see that. But if you have it now, yes, you can use it for that. But um, I would not, I would apply it now if it's not, you know, if you're not, you know, what's in disease X? I mean, the, the, the time to apply, um, if, if, if the active ingredient in it is a stock to strobin, I don't know how much of the active ingredients in there, but you can use that to help prevent spring dead spot, but I would not use it for brown patch unless you've actually got brown patch um, in your lawn right now. McNasty Motorsports is up next. He says, I did some pot planting with perennial ryegrass and fescue on October 23rd. Both planted at the same time. So October 23rd, that, that sounds like, uh, what, two weeks ago? Two, almost three weeks ago? Almost three weeks ago. And this is what his, uh, his ryegrass plot, nope, that's not what it looks like. This is what his uh, ryegrass plot looks like now. So there you see, there's the rye and there's the fescue three weeks later. Pretty cool. Cool stuff, sir. It's growing in nicely. All right. Uh, NMS Auditor says, I love the hat, but wish I would have bought the $1.9 billion lottery ticket. You and everyone else on the live stream, man, can you imagine? What, I mean, what would you do with 1.9? Well, I think you get half of it. So what would you do with almost a billion dollars? Can you imagine? I mean, you'd have like a sweet lawnmower. I mean, any kind of lawn renovation you wanted to pull out, you could do. I mean, would you still even mow your grass anymore? Or would you just be like, no, nah, I'm not, that's beyond me. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I mean, Nasty says with 1.9 billion, you could have 350Z, uh, any cultivar of grass you want. That's right. You definitely could. You definitely could. All right. Uh, let's see here. Next up, we have um, Gladiator392. He says, hey, Ron, will winter rye hurt Bermuda grass for next season? No, it will not. So if you overseed, well, I should say it, let me qualify that. If you overseeded your lawn with rye grass, which, is, which I think which is what you're saying, um, will it hurt your Bermuda next season? Not really, unless, as long as you get rid of it. So if you if you have if your lawn is traditionally a Bermuda lawn and you overseed it with ryegrass and um and you get rid of it, you spray it out, use a selective herbicide to remove it, like something like Celsius or 
um, or Katana um, to, to kill it in like March timeframe, then your Bermuda will grow in just fine and it will be, it'll, it'll be fine. But if you don't do that, so if you just leave the ryegrass alone, what's gonna happen is it is gonna negatively affect the Bermuda's um, green up and it'll be as late as like, I've, the one lawn around here that the, the guy did, he's done it like two years in a row now, uh, where it's you walk the you walk around the neighborhood and you'll see, you look at his lawn and like late May almost early June the ryegrass is now try, really trying to die off like it's like it's looking like sickly and dying and the Bermuda grass really hasn't grown in either so just the lawn just looks terrible because you, it looks it looks like it looks like imagine like a, a a Bermuda grass lawn but then it's got all these little these tall almost look like like weeds all throughout it and it's ryegrass that he didn't get rid of in March when he was supposed to so. To answer your question, if you get rid of, if you remove it in March, like you're like, which is what you're supposed to do, then no, you, your Bermuda will be just fine. If you just let nature take its course, you're gonna have a mess on your hands. So it's it, it's up to you whether or not you have a good looking Bermuda lawn in the summertime um, if you overseed it with ryegrass uh, this time of year, so. Good stuff. All right, he, um, Hitambo says, hey Ron, I'm here, great content as always. Very cool, sir. Congrats on the sticker. And again, if anyone else wants to win a sticker, you can. If you get some Primo or Celsius or Celeprint or Certainty, if you buy, if you order any of those products, any of the, the herbicide products um, on, the, on the first top two rows of the Golf Course Lawn Store, I will include a sticker with it. So it's another way for you to get one. Or you can always wait till the next drawing and try your chances. All right, so next up is Smith, is Vincent Smithson. He says, Ron, love the channel. Appreciate it, thank you so much. He says, what are your thoughts on spring dead spot? I absolutely hate it, because I, I deal with it in my lawn and it's 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 horrible. Uh, causes, fixes, I swear I've had spots, the runners won't go over this here. Okay, so spring dead spot, the problem with spring dead spot, Vincent, is that is it starts as a disease that starts like now. So um, it, it, it the, as far as the causes of it, um, from the research I've done, like pushing a lot of uh, excess amounts of nitrogen in the fall months create conditions for spring dead spot to to take root. Um, but the problem is you're not going to see you're not going to see it manifest itself until the spring. So as far as things you can do to prevent it, um, once Octoberish timeframe rolls around, I'm assuming you have like a warm season lawn. Uh, start backing off, reducing the amount of nitrogen that you're putting into the lawn. So in my case, my last nitrogen application was October. That was it. It was a light app, and that was that was it to shut shut the uh, lawn down for the for the season. Um, and then the second thing you can do is in October do a fungicide application, and then in November do another fungicide application. So when the fall when fall rolls around, limit the amount of nitrogen that you're putting into the lawn, and then also do a preventative fungicide app. And those things coupled together will greatly improve your chances of not having spring dead spot or reducing the amount of damage you have from spring dead spot. Um, and you know, to, to your point, it's I mean, it's it's really just an insightly thing because I mean, I I had one spot that was um, kind of bad this year. It was it was not as bad as it has been in years past, but um, it was probably you know I don't know the size of a hat, like maybe this the maybe like this the size of this hat. I don't know what that is. Uh, eight eight inches, eight, 10 inches, like that in diameter. And it took, the rest of the lawn was greened up and it wasn't until like late May, early June that that, that the grass finally filled in and went over it and, and, it, and the lawn caught up. So the way to prevent it, as far as your practices are to reduce the amount of nitrogen in the fall and then to use a preventative fungicide. What I use is uh, headway. So I did, if you guys follow me on YouTube or follow my YouTube stories, if you're like a subscriber, you guys know that earlier this week before the rain showed up, I did an application of Headway G. So uh, this, I, I, did, I did an app in October and I did another app just a couple of days ago and now I'm done. Now it's just to sit back and wait and see what uh, see what kind of results I get. But it's but it, that is that is a strategy, that is a strategy for preventing uh, spring dead spot in your lawn. One, limit the amount of nitrogen that you're putting in in the fall months, and then also you put a couple, of, do a couple of preventative fungicide applications. I like to do one in October, the beginning of October, and again the one in the beginning beginning of November, and then just uh, just wait. But it, it, I'm with you, man. It's it stinks. I really really don't like uh, spring dead spot. It's it's uh it's pretty it's pretty bad stuff. 
All right, Harper says he won't even call or text. I don't have a Hank 619 error code. I've gone grateful. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, keep, keep, well, I don't know, just keep, keep asking. Just call him. Just keep, I don't know what to tell you. I can't, I don't know. I can't like work out like family issues. I don't know why he's not calling, um, why he's not calling or, or texting um, or any of this stuff. But I, you know, just, I would reach out to him and say, hey, listen, man, because, hey, take, I mean, I don't know what's caused you guys to not be talking as much, but the fact that he's someone that obviously cares a lot about grass and the fact that you're now getting into grass, you might be able to say, hey, son, you know, I'm trying to get my lawn looking better. I know we haven't spoken that much in the past, but, you know, grat, I know you're like an expert on this. Would you mind throwing me a couple of tips? You know what I mean? So that might be a way to break the ice and get him to, to, uh, to call you back and, and haven't heard from him since July. Yeah, I mean, that happens. As kids get older and they kind of, they, they go off and do, I don't know how old your son is, but as they get older, they start going off and doing their own thing. Yeah, you tend to hear from them. I would say you tend to hear from them less and less, but uh, that's not uncommon is what I'm trying to say. All right, uh, James Kelly says, I have a great looking Kentucky bluegrass lawn and my neighbor has a bunch of common Bermuda. I'm fighting that battle. Any advice on how to keep the stolons and rhizomes out? Man, a physical barrier. Physical barrier, James. That's that's about it. A physical barrier, eight inches beneath the the surface of the the the, the surface of the lawn is what you're going to need to to have a a fighting chance to keep the uh, the common Bermuda out. And even then, it's it's probably still going to find a way to get in there. I'm um, just putting you know just putting like pavers in. That's not going to do it. You need like a physical barrier, ideally eight inches or so beneath the surface to keep them out. That's gonna um that's going to it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a challenge to, uh, to, to do that. Sorry. I don't have, I don't have better news for you. Unfortunately on that one, Kevin D's like, uh, Ke LG's an OG, like the old man on the park bench. What do we <laughs> expect? That is him. That is him. You're right. That is, that is LG. That's a good description for LG. All right. Next up, we got Rio the Hitman. He says, sup, Ron? I wasn't too late. I bought a true cut uh, C27 for $800 and sharpened it. But before we go too far, we got to clap it up for the new hardware. Congrats on the new mower, sir. So you sharpened it, changed the oil and gas, grease up and changed the sparks plug and it's cutting really well. 800 bucks is a good price for that, man. That's, that's uh, I mean, granted, you bought it for 800, you probably put another two or 300 bucks in it, I'd imagine. So, you know, you're in it for a thousand, eleven hundred bucks or so. That's, it's not, it's not bad for a really good mower. And uh, to your point, once it's all set up properly and sharpened, it will do the business. It'll do a great job. Next up, we got Archie Amos, who's always good to come in and say, evening, young man, just checking in. Thanks thanks for coming to check in, Archie. I really appreciate you, sir. Hopefully all is going well with you. I think you're in South Carolina, right? I know you said you, you told me you have a place in Buffalo, but I think you mainly hang out in South Carolina. So hopefully all is going well with you. Appreciate you coming in to hang out in the uh, live stream. And we're winding down, guys. We are winding down. Let's see. Harper's Knitter, send the picture of the weed to Ron. Hopefully he or someone here can help. Yes, I don't see the picture in the chat, but if you send it, if you email it to me, Harper, if you're here, Ron at Golf Course Lawn. Actually, I'll type it in the chat here as well. So Ron, you have to click so it gets focused. Ron at golfcourselawn.com. You can send me an email there with the picture and I will take a look at it. And we're winding down now, so it'll probably be next week, but it'll give me something to talk about and have some, some content for next week, right, on the live stream. So feel free to send the picture in and uh, we'll get it taken care of. All right, Jim Carson says, is it any wonder <laughs> why people from SoCal hate the Giants? Yeah, the Giants, I mean, I don't know. I mean, are they, they're, they're just, they're not one of those, they're not, they're like the California Panthers of like baseball, right? I mean, and I'm sure some people are a Giants fan. And if you're a Giants fan, I mean, don't hate me. But if there's one of those teams that they're still a team, but they don't have a really big following. Like, I don't know a ton of people that, I, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I've ever met anybody in person that's like a Giants fan or like, a, I mean, a, um, uh, the, the baseball team, like a Giants fan um, or a, um, or anyone in person that I've met that's a, Panthers fan. Panthers fan probably more likely to happen, but Giants fan, I don't think I've ever met one in person. All right. All right. And then uh, NMS Auditor is up next. He says, once I had a live stream, I watched Monday through Friday. Now I only watch Monday through Thursday. <laughs> Friday nights are for the golf course lawn live stream. Can hardly wait till spring. Come on, Bermuda. That is an, thank you so much, NMS Auditor. Well, 
you know, you'll be able to, you know, look, watch the live stream in style with a hat that you want. So congrats on that, sir. And guys, we are winding down. We don't really have any more questions or comments for tonight. So a little bit, we just off a little bit early tonight, but it was still fun. Still a fun show. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it. If you are looking to get your fungicides for your for your lawn to prevent spring dead spot in your lawn, we still have plenty of Headway G in stock. It's shipping, ships quickly. We'll get it to you so you can um, you know do all you can to keep uh, spring dead spot out of your lawn, as well as assortment of herbicides and other products such as our, we didn't even get into the Miramichi biosimilants tonight, no one asked, but we got our biosimilants that are also really helpful. And uh, as probably the most popular section on the store, are our weed killers. So you got kits for warm season grass and cool season grass. So we got you covered for everything to for everything you'll need to help create the lawn that is the envy of your neighborhood. So guys, thank you guys so much for hang, coming to hang out tonight. Really, really do appreciate it. If you guys just happen to live in a part of the country where the lawn is, where the grass is warming up, or the, the grass warming up, but the weather's warming up a little bit, and you can get out there and do some mowing. Feel free to do that. Get out and mow your lawn. Have some fun mowing. And uh, until next time, we will talk next week. And I really, really do appreciate it. Actually, no, I got a super chat here from Dean. I want to acknowledge that. Super sticker. Thanks for that, Dean. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for the support, sir. Super chat. And until next time, guys, have an amazing weekend. Take care.